Uh, it is 6.11, so I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, I have ensured a quorum. Um, I do believe that Sam will not be joining us. He's at an out-of-town conference. Rachel hopefully can join us at 7. Um, she is double booked for a meeting right now. Um, the meeting purpose tonight, uh, subcommittee reports and school presentations. We have a few. Excited. Uh, before I go on to public comment, um, I do believe there are items people are requesting to be added to the agenda. Yes. Um, are you? I would like to make a request to uh, edit the agenda. I'd like to remove C-13 and C-15 from uh, Students Are Homeless and Students Conduct and Discipline. I um, added it to the agenda under the belief that they had not been updated. Um, however, subsequently we have discovered they were amended um, in January of 2023. So they are not up for review at this time. They have been posted to the website. Um, I would additionally like to request to add to the agenda to grant hiring authority to either the board chair or possibly the vice chair or someone because we're currently in a very critical hiring time. And so waiting a month, we could lose a candidate. Like we're currently, we currently have candidates for the assistant principal of the high school who have other contracts in hand. So, uh, and you're talking about signing authority. Signing authority uh, temporarily through the summer. I'd like to add that to the agenda for a motion in front of the board. Thank okay. you for that, Hannah. Absolutely. I do believe I need a motion to add those, don't I? We need a vote to add so to moved. edit the agenda. Thank you, Kata. Thank you, Sarah. Seconded by Sarah for uh, uh, further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I did have. To. Thank you. Uh, th those items are unanimously added. Thank I believe you. someone else had something uh, and uh, added. Just today. adding the uh, committee meeting minutes for the ownership linkage committee to the consent agenda for approval and um, uh, an item of board preparedness, I guess, would be the board preparedness okay um, if so added uh, if that would go under board education yeah um, and I'll just say the uh, signing authority will go under the consent agenda consent agenda thank yes. you Oops. Uh, uh, I will entertain a motion to add the two items uh, mentioned by, well, you're moving, aren't you, to add those? Uh, I made a motion to add them. Yes. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll Again, second. Thank you. Seconded by Emil. Uh, further discussion? No? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions unanimously passes. Uh, so, board education. Okay, I'm putting that at the end of that second se section, just so people are aware. Um, all right, boy, do we, we may have public here. I don't know who that, uh, At this time, we have Bob Worley and Orca. And or oh, <clears throat> that's who that phone number is? Yes, I believe, ah. I could be wrong. Um, I'm it, hopeful it's Orca. Okay. Is that you? Uh, as far as I know. Okay. <laughs> I love that answer. That's how I feel. Um, Do so, I have another? Ah, I have a request for another uh, agenda edit. I'd like to take a quick amount of time to recognize Kara and the Brookfield community for some quick action in a crisis earlier this week when two students went missing. Yeah. That was a remarkably quick resolution, and I think you deserve formal recognition for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to assume that that is what you wanted to say, and it's not actually an agenda item Correct. to add. That's it. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Um, all right. So uh, I will now open to public comment. <clears throat> I'm going to save people my reading of the preamble if um, there are no public here. Boy, I got to get my words in order here. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Good. Any objections from the board? Me moving on. Great. Um, moving on. So, message from board chair about the superintendent transition. This is this is me. Um, just taking a couple of minutes uh, because this will be Lane's last board meeting um, as superintendent. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes on the record um, to recognize Lane Millington, um, the work that he's done for this district, the commitment he's had to this district. Um, he has seen the district through unprecedented times, um, events, uh, struggles, challenges, um, and has done so with grace, uh, professionalism, um, and I for one, and I believe I speak for the board, and, and um, yes, uh, in, in its many iterations since Lane came to the district, um, a thank you, uh, an acknowledgement, um, and, and uh, deep respect and luck and fortune in the next step of your career. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that's what I meant by superintendent transition, just a message. Uh, mm -hmm. Retirees and resignations, Heather? Um, shall I, I'd like to um, read the list or do we have the list printed? I don't have the list printed. I would like to read a list of um, retirees and uh, resignations from the district. Um, Pat Miller, Darlene Young, Haley Larry, Michael Dooley, Jennifer Patterson, Brian Kippen, Andrea McLaughlin, Kathy Bishop, Danny Bellavance, Jim Barry. <laughs> If your phone number ends in 5-9, uh, we're getting some feedback. <clears throat> Can I mute them? If you're the uh, meeting host. I think. you got to open it up so you can see them on the panel on the side, the two people standing next to each other before. And then I think you can do it from the three buttons, maybe. No. You can't remotely mute this participant. Oh, you may not be the meeting originator. No, yeah, it is. Oh! <coughs> Do I my laptop? Which I have mine. Okay. Sorry. I apologize for Stan, I hurt my back running to this. <laughs> Sitting in the chair. Uh, attendee on the phone. I think Bob. it's Bob. Oh. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Where was I? Danny Bellavance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Danny was transportation coordinator. Jim Barry, director of Raven. Um, Karen Johnson, registrar at the high school. Oh, no, that's not right. Yes, that is right. That's exactly right. Uh, Deanna Murray, Brian Burgess, Patty Millington, Jason Finley. Jennifer Wellman, Lydia Gleason, Lance Madsey, Harriet Hart, Alyssa Matz, Andrew Glynn, and Christy Arquin. Uh, it's quite a long list. I'd like to invite any principals present um, if they want to make comments on any of our longstanding and distinguished service members. I can just speak to the three from Randolph Union. Um, Karen Johnson has been our registrar for several years. She's incredibly skilled. We appreciate her dedication to our students and record keeping, something that not all people are passionate about. Um, additionally, Elisa Matz has worked here for the first decade of her career. She leaves us to go teach in the community in which she lives. She'll eventually get to teach her own students. <clears throat> She's an incredibly talented and skilled educator, and we will miss her. And finally, Andrew Glynn came to us two years ago as a special educator. We're incredibly fortunate to have had him um, with us for that time to work with students through our middle school and ninth grade level, and we wish him the best as well. I have Jennifer Wellman leaving my 
school. She is a caring and thoughtful special educator. We're sad to see her go as she's been incredibly dedicated to our students with special needs and is a great collaborative collaborator with our teachers to ensure that our students are getting what they need for that instruction in the classroom. So she'll be sorely missed. I'd like to speak to the service of Pat Miller, who's been with the district for a significant amount of time as the principal of Braintree and then as the director of our preschool programs. She has been responsible for the launch and continuance of that important pre-K program. Um, also uh, to Danny Bellavance, our transportation director. Um, is going to retirement and we wish him a long and healthy retirement. We will miss him um, Jim Barry is the teacher of Raven um, And he was our teacher of the year last year for good reason and he is also retiring and will be very missed um, Nika are you here? here? Do you want to speak to any of these names? I would I'll speak to Lance if you Oh, yes. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I can speak to Jason, too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'll do Lance and then... Perfect. Okay. Uh, Lance Madsey is leaving us. He's only been with us for three years, but in that three years, he has transformed uh, the video and digital um, film and television program to be one of our highest enrolled programs at the Tech Center. Um, waiting list, full classroom fully engaged students and he will be missed. He is he has accepted a position um, in the Midwest to be closer to his uh, aging parents. Um, and Jason Finley is leaving us after one year as associate principal. He is going to work at the Hartford Area Technical and Career Center. I believe um, his heart has always been in a tech center. He came to us from RTCC um, he will be working as a counselor there and helping students find job placements and access um, college and career pathways. So we're sad to see him go, but excited for him to be able to engage in work he, he really loves and feels passionately about. Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, so I would just like to acknowledge Brian Kibben, who has really um, brought the math into manufacturing and fabrication, um, and and we want to continue on that. I think that um, the work that he's done uh, in the classroom has taught us a lot about how mathematics can be, and not only mathematics, but ELA can be integrated into tech center classes. And so um, he's given us, or given me, a lot of ideas for um, best practice for next year, so I do want to acknowledge him there. Um, I also want to acknowledge Dr. Lee Gleason, who's done an amazing job, not only in her classroom as um, as a dental instructor, but or dental assisting instructor, but also outside of the classroom. Um, she's donated a lot of her time to um, helping the student ambassadors, putting on the prom, giving us a yearbook, um, doing uh, Dress for Success. There's just a lot of things that she's added to that community at our school. Um, outside of her individual classroom. So I want to thank her for that. And I also want to thank Christy Erwin, um, who has uh, just such a lovely way of working with students um, and that they feel very loved and, um, and very cared for and that they have somebody that they can go to if they need anything. Um, so yes, and, and again, Lance, uh, such a wonderful asset to our community and someone for our next um, film instructor to really look up to and to learn from the work that he's created here. So, thank you. And before we end, is Harriet Hart supposed to be on that list? I didn't know about Harriet Hart until I read the name. Um, Harriet Hart is a preschool teacher at Braintree Elementary School and she has really spearheaded <coughs> the outdoor education element that is considered best practice and she spread that throughout the district. If you've seen our preschool students in the rain suits, that started with Harriet. And, um, and uh, I'm, sure if it, I'm sure that it is family that is pulling her from the classroom. She's just had her second uh, little one and um, she'll be missed. And I'm sorry that Kayla and um, Melinda, there's a few people who are not here to speak to the people on on the list, but we thank everyone for their service and time in the district.
You have one more? Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Um, I just also, I wanted to just uh, acknowledge Karen Johnson because um, she works for RU, but she has given so much of her time to RTCC to help us with power school needs um, that she actually does not have to do, but she's been incredibly generous. And not only that, she's given us instructions to follow through with the work once she's no longer employed here, um, which is really, really kind and wonderful. I also would like to acknowledge Jim Berry, who's been absolutely one of the most lovely human beings um, that I've met. And um, I got to witness him talking with a student and doing it in such a um, uplifting and meaningful way that his, uh, his loss will be felt for sure. And I've only gotten to know him for a year and he means a lot to me just in that time. And one last person is Danny Bell Events, who um, is so, so kind. And anytime we've needed something, um, that man will get right back to you so fast. And he just really cares about the students and about providing um, through through bus services and transportation services, like the best service that he can provide for our kids. So he's really gonna be missed too. And just in this past year, I'm very grateful for the work that he's done with RTC. And although his name is not on the list, uh, as it was already acknowledged by the board, uh, Lane Millington, uh, for his distinguished service over the past seven years, who has led the district to great improvements, including the pre-K program and the improvement of student outcomes across the district. And I'd like to give him a hand. And thank you very much for taking this time to acknowledge these resignations and uh, retirements uh, as part of your ownership linkage. Thank you. Uh, forgive me, but because I, it turns out, was the host technically of this meeting, there were people who couldn't join right away because I was not signed on um, online and were patiently waiting to join. So I'm going to jump back to public comment. I'm going to go ahead and read the preamble and then open it up. <laughs> <clears throat> to those online with my apologies for my technological faux pas. Uh, the board welcomes comments but is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker and time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked to. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can certainly express agreements with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. And with that, I open the floor for public comment. Seeing none, going once, going twice. Well, you had to sit through me reading the preamble anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for your patience with me. Uh, moving on, the ownership linkage committee report. Um, Katya, you had sent out a letter for the board to review. Yep, so I met, uh, I think it was the 17th. Um, and then drafted a letter from the ideas that we came up with at that meeting. Um, I did send it out to everyone on the board just for a review, um, any comments or feedback, um, and we can make any edits. I Just in time constraint, I don't know if we as a board want to approve the draft with minimal edits or something that just, I don't want to have to bring it back to the board if, um, if we don't have to have like a special meeting to send it out, so. Um, did everyone present here receive the email from Katya and did everyone have a chance to read through the letter? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I would propose, yeah, voting with uh, one more set of eyes for grammar and typos, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, but I will entertain a motion to uh, approve the, the draft for finality. I move that we accept the letter that the Ownership Linkage Committee wrote to be sent out on Front Porch Forum, the Herald, yeah, I think there the was website. A, I think there are a few places that we have asked. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Seconded by Sarah. Thank you. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
abstentions. <laughs> passes unanimously. Anyway, Thank you for I, your work. So nobody had any edits on that? Other than that one that no. Mark fixed your name. Yeah. It's all about me. <laughs> it's all about me. Yeah. <laughs> your name is so hard. I, I it's on these vowels. I, I'm I so sorry. I would make a request though when this names and emails are added just to double check my email because true. things still go to Heidi. Yeah. 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 Name, which is English. yeah. Just to make sure that the emails are spelled correctly. Okay. So that will go out. Um, Perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you, committee members, for your work on, on that letter. Um, the ENDS committee also met. Mm -hmm. um, and we did have something that we wanted the board to look at, but it was going to be from Rachel, correct? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and she sent it to us, but did she not send it out to the rest of the board? Mm -mm. I don't believe no. so. So the rest of the board didn't get it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and propose that we um, table that, table it, yeah, and um, we will be meeting before the next meeting, so we may be able to even have so. a, yeah. something further along for you to look at. Um, great. Um, these next two items, um, mm -hmm. the rules of procedure and the policy governance overview, which both are in our board binders. They're in the binders. Yeah. However. They were not in the board packet. They weren't in the board packet, but you all have them shared on Google Docs. I, I, I just want to be very careful about including things in meetings that are not then in included the in the packet. Um, okay. We have access to them, yes. We have them printed. We have the Google Docs, but um, I, I, I'm trying to be pickier with myself and stricter with myself mm -hmm. about um, so, so, it, it, so did procedures. everybody get a chance to read it in the Google Doc? Can, or does here. not everybody, can not everybody use Google Docs? I'll be very honest. I, when I'm reviewing for our board meeting, I'm reviewing what's presented to me as a board member in the in board the packet, packet. Because that's okay. what we should be working off of as a board. Okay. So if it's not in the packet, then I'm not reviewing it because I don't want to review something that's not the accurate document or um, if it's in here, I'm reviewing it. Okay. All right. Uh, so we'll just have to table that, I guess, until next time. Mm -hmm. um, and I won't be here the next time. And I there are a couple of things that I would like to change in there or that so I guess what I'll do is I'll print it out. I'll send a PDF with the Google corrections that I've put in, and you all can see what I would like to change. Well, and then actually, can, if we could just we work off the document as it is now, and then if you have proposals, if those could be separate, if you either want to email them to me and I can present on your behalf, okay. or email them to Kyle in a document so they can also be in, in the okay. packet. But if we all, I think, should be uh, presented with the document that we may all want to propose changes to or edits to or okay. additions. So the original is in here, mm -hmm. um, and all and all. I think I can, I can unsuggest all the suggestions. I'll figure it out because that with Google Doc, once you start. Right, I think anything that's going to go in this packet needs to be PDF. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so non-editable. Um, okay. But you can at least start by looking at what's in the binder so that you know what we're looking at for next time. Um, so those last three items in there all tabled for uh, the next meeting, June 19th. Um, the VSBA webinar. I'm hoping the link worked that I sent to everyone. Um, you know, review. It's, it's, it's a discussion item, but mostly when I send out these webinar links, they're meant to be a reminder if you want to bring something up here to the group that was confusing or surprising or challenging, not quite clear, this is a good place to do it. I don't mean this as a test. I don't mean this as a... Um, Anything other than it should be informative. We don't have to have a long discussion about it, but if anyone wants to bring something up that occurred to them, 
a raised hand. There's a raised hand. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Christopher. Uh, yes, uh, Ron and I were stuck in the uh, lobby at the beginning. We're the auditors, and uh, we didn't know if we'd already jumped over our positions, but uh, so I just wanted to make sure that somebody knew we were here in attendance. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we have not gotten there yet, but we're almost there. Um, so I appreciate that, and, and thank you for your patience. You were the ones I kept locked out but unintentionally. Um, so are we, is everybody okay? It was helpful, so thank you for mm -hmm. sure. Excellent, yeah. Excellent, Good. and, and um, I'll try to keep doing that. I have them on the annual agenda, the ones that I think kind of have to do with where we are. Mm -hmm. um, oh, those are great. Cool. And did our new mm -hmm. board members, so there, there was a cheat sheet that, that just came out, I think, for the board appreciation. Right. Oh, you got it. Yeah, Good. you got one. Did no, you get I one too, one. Ryan? Thank you, okay, yes. great. And then the other thing is, is in our board binder, there's also the um, it's a it's a uh, something that the Vermont League of Cities and Towns put together that goes over open meeting law as well. Yes. So if you like are like, oh man, what what was that again? <laughs> you don't have to go back and watch the whole. Um, the whole, uh, and their website is searchable too, really easily. Oh, very good. Topic. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, the entire binder has been helpful. Great. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, board prep. Uh, I wonder if we kind of touch. Mm -hmm. This is an added item um, from Katya. Yeah, we kind of touched on it just now. Um, I think my only concern is that. Um, you know, reading the agenda, there's a number of things on the agenda that were not included in our packet. Um, and I do feel like the board needs to be able to come to meetings prepared, ready to discuss things, having been able to review documents prior to the meeting. Um, so I'm not quite sure where this sits, if this sits with the board. Um, but I just would, I guess, like to figure out how we can make sure that what we're what we're, what we're getting as an agenda is reflected in what we're receiving prior to the meeting for review and and prior oh prior prior to like with a good lead time to be able to review things too i find it really challenging um to get it when we're either prior to the meeting you know Shortly before a meeting, I wasn't able to review the auditor's report, um, or even I think we received this packet yesterday, um, which really didn't give a lot of time for review. I think usually Kyle gets the packet out the Friday. The Friday before, prior. But she was coming back from vacation. It sounds like she's sick, <laughs> so that might be part of the reason why. It yeah. Yeah. And that's because don't you usually aim to get us the packet like Friday? I well, do, but I was on a cruise ship Friday. <laughs> yeah. And I was yeah. Not yeah. Doing you were enjoying yeah. a cruise. So normally we at least have the packet. Yes. Um, and and the review, the documents, that was my bad because I thought everybody could look at the Google Doc and everybody has the binder but and is is the board packet supposed to be um and this may be just just for me understanding the items in the packet are those public um information too mm -hmm. so that's yeah, not on on the website then it should be it should be now should be now okay because it wasn't it wasn't when i checked i guess yes or prior like the two days prior um, so again, I just, I'm just concerned that we're not allowing enough time for, for that piece, but maybe it's just me. No, that's a fair assessment. <coughs> yeah, I mean, I think, um, what comes up for me and what you're saying is that we never want to give the perception that we're here and going to vote on things that we haven't given, you know, uh, um, dedicated 
thought and, and question to, right? That's, that's part of our job. Um, so the more lead time we have, the better. Um, so great, the Friday before. Uh, and if we're ever not providing you with something, like the charts that, uh, you know, those are for me, or, or we've asked for something on the agenda, and you're like, well, okay, that's great, but we need an attachment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. However we can help you. Thank you. Thank you for the added item. All right. We're on to some presentations here, and it looks like... Ms. Houston, mm -hmm. you're up first. Can we? Can we? Uh, so you, so you have to display it so the people at home can see it as well. Mm -hmm. Reorder. So if you will um, join this I meeting. Do you, yeah. uh, you want me to invite you? Um, so you have the link. I don't know. Yes. I mean, can I we at this point? No, though? I made that myself. I don't know. That's what I can't remember. Jump to something. I should have done that. Else. Okay. Well, I think that would have had to be said that you wanted me to go. Sure, let's find the agenda. Although, yeah. Changing order of business, postponing our tabling may be made by a non presentation. I have a Perfect. So we can change the order. There's no one else here. Yes, we do. The order is right. So, would you like me to present first while Kara gets set up? Well, I actually have a um, a proposal from from a board member here that we reorder a bit. Um, and everyone's time is is valuable. Everyone's time is, is important. Um, and I don't want to higher prioritize one over the other. Well, However, we can let these two auditors know that we're that we won't we won't need them for another thirty minutes, so they can use their time to do whatever. <laughs> and that's the other thing. Right. Um, Christopher and Ronald. Um, in terms of our agenda, we have about a half hour more of business before your item. Yeah, listen, folks, and I heard you say you had some stuff not in your packet. I got a hard stop at 7 because I got another meeting because I thought we were talking at 6 o'clock. So would it be best just to represent this thing at another time? I'm just not going to be able to sadly wait another half hour. Sure. Um, somebody help me. Do we so jump we this? need to have a motion to table it. We're just going to go now. I mean, whatever. Would it be okay to have the auditors... Present before. That's fine. Yeah, we just no. need to move. Okay. No, yeah. Just... I move to have the auditor to rearrange our schedule to have the auditors present now so that they are able to present at this meeting. Okay. I'll second. Great. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> Unanimous. Okay. Forget the half hour. We're with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, folks. I appreciate it. I didn't mean to take a hard line. I just had another meeting schedule I just can't miss. So. No, understood. Oh. That was our mistake at the beginning. Thank you. Is Robin right there? I can't really tell who's in the room. Robin, do you want to kind of launch this uh, conversation? No, Robin. Robin is no, not Robin. here. Okay. So, so how about I do this? I'll introduce myself. I'm Ron Smith. We got Chris Matt on the phone. And you know, we're your first year auditors and we appreciate the opportunity to do business with, you know, with Orange Southwest. And to tell you a little bit about, you know, ourselves, we, uh, we, we work with 75 other professionals. We do over two thirds of all the school systems in the state of Vermont and in the state of Maine, you know, so we know a lot about who you are and, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, what's going on out there in the industry. I hail from the great town of St. Johnsbury, and Chris Matt hails from the great town of uh, Waterford, Vermont. So, so uh, with that, you know, um, uh, I'm gonna. I, I don't know what you all have in front of you. Do you actually have a copy of the audit report in front of you, or do you want me to just go through? I know you're pressed with time. Just hit the highlights of a hundred pages of it. Of the hundred pages of it. Please hit the highlight. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll start off with this. You guys got our highest opinion, an unmodified opinion. Certainly, if we would have had problems, you know, if there was fraud, if there was de defalcation, you know, disagreements with management, we would have to certainly qualify our opinion. We didn't. You got us our, our highest opinion of unmodified. 
to, to talk financially, you know, about you guys. I mean, you, you, you guys have done a lot of right things, you know, as far as, you know, uh, calculatedly knowing who you are and putting money away for certain things like capital reserves, you know, maintenance reserves, operational reserves, you know, scholarships, the money that you have out there. You guys are financially sound without a, a shadow of a doubt. Your general fund balance went up from about 2.9 to 3.3 million dollars, of which you traditionally use like all of it, you know, for future operational budgets, you know, and relief, you know, for for that. Um, and it largely went up because your revenues came in over what you budgeted estimated by about I think that was a little more than three hundred thousand dollars. And your expenses they were pretty close to your total budget. You know, of uh, you know, of over like twenty-two million bucks, your expenses within one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of what you actually expended. You know, during the course of the year for your general fund operations. So, so, so the good news is your general fund balance went up. It's typically what we're seeing out there with the school systems, but we're starting to see the numbers of the fund balances that are you know that we've seen since you know, for lack of a better way to say it, the pandemic. We're starting to see those numbers start to go down, folks. You know, as far as these increases in general fund balances, they're getting smaller and smaller than they have been for the past, past couple of years. And that just tells me that you're getting back to the world of normality, you know, of what your budget looks like and certainly spending within your budget. You know, so, so yeah, I mean, the good news is, is your fund balance went up, it grew. You know, and uh, you were able to put some money away into some other, you know, needed operational reserve accounts that you have. You've got a healthy technical center with a set about almost a three quarters of a million dollar carryover balance into this year. You know, you've got uh, so, so Medicaid money for program services of about 720, $1.7 million sitting in your operational reserve fund. You know, and then um, uh, just various capital projects funds, you know, that you've got over three po th over three million dollars sitting aside for various capital projects down the road for the district. So I think that you guys obviously understand your business. You guys have calculatedly put money away. And 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 and, and I would say, hey, you know, compared to some of your other fellow school systems out there, you really have done some smart things with your money to put them away for what some much needed, you know, uh, probably future future tax relief, future projects, things like that, where you're not going to have to raise it all through taxation to your general fund, bu general fund budget. So I'd say congratulations to that for sure. So, um, you know, as far as just some of the other highlights and talking points, you know, you know, with you all, you know, I mean, vir virtually everything, everything financially, I, I, I can't find a, a, a financial flaw you know, that you guys have just because of some of the prudent spending and, you know, prudent kind of, for lack of a better way, foresight and financial plan that you have, you know, really you guys have done a lot of the right things. Probably if anything that we've done with this first year engagement, we worked hard with Robin just to kind of rearrange your general ledger. We did a lot of cleanup, you all, you know, for, uh, you know, for this audit in 23, working with Robin to do so, you know, and really, you know, really kind of put this in a position where you can follow your budget to your financial statements to the audit report. I really think, you know, that uh, we took the time to sit down with Robin and listen to some of the changes and do some of the cosmetics she's been asking for in the past couple of years. I really feel we covered a lot of ground, you know, through this audit. So any questions financially so far, you all? Questions from the board? No. I don't think so. We did a federal compliance audit. You were clean. We actually found some best practice issues. One of the things that we worked with Robin is we identified, you know, some money in your scholarship fund just because of how the mechanics of that thing works, where Robin's reached out to the bank to collateralize the money that that needed to be collateralized, you know, so uh, so that we can provide some safety, you know, for that money. That was something that was probably one of the bigger, higher priorities that we did during the audit is quickly identify that and work with the banking institutions to, you know, to remedy that issue. And there were just a variety of other best practice issues. Um, there's an IRS issue 
with some filings of the Affordable Care Act forms that we're working with a local IRS officer, you know, and trying to remedy for that. That issue's been going on for about five years and certainly paperwork got stalled in COVID and it reared its head this year. And Robin asked for our help and assistance to, you know, to help remedy that. So we're certainly, you know, in the process of doing that. And I would say, you know, uh, Thanks to Rob and really to, you know, kind of saying, hey, you know, here, here's here's really what some of our talking points I'd really, you know, like all ears and eyes on this. If we can make this a better process and exercise this year, clean some things up, deal with some matters here that have kind of been lingering with the district. This certainly we accomplished a lot of that this year, you all, and really kind of hats off for Rob and for, you know, for working and kind of like pointing us in the direction of where that assistance was needed for the district. That's a pretty mm -hmm. positive highlight reel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like Is that. Is there anything that we uh, need to be concerned about or that sh we should be working toward? I think that operational fund balance that you got carried forward of about two, I think it was about $2.6 million. They're probably ought to get a hard look at that plan. I mean, that number has been there for the past two or three years. And I get that you're using it for future operational budgets and, you know, and things like that probably ought to take a hard look in the, you know, as far as your reserve accounts and, you know, consider using your budget process probably in one of the next couple of years to, you know, to, 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 to look and see, you know, really, you know, is there, is there a better place for this? Okay. Whether it's tax relief, you know, whether it's, you know, your capital reserve for, you know, for your, your maintenance and your facility transportation, you know, things like that, you know, probably just looking at that number, Robin and I and Chris talked about that, you know, just about some, you know, some, some other options of constructive use for that money. That's about it. But, but really that's a product of good fiscal management. You all good fiscal management. You've landed, you haven't overspent your budget. You've had some favorable years. You know, uh, I used to call them lucky before COVID and now I'm calling just like extra lucky. We had a, you know, sadly, you know, this, this, this earth shattering thing that happened that really altered all the government budgets, whether it's be municipal, county, school, you know, uh, water, wastewater, you know, you're really, you know, you're really coming out of that pandemic now. And I think that it's really going to give you an opportunity to re review your financial portfolio. And that's certainly what Chris and I have done with Robin. So. Great. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And hey, thanks for allowing us to step in. I appreciate it. So. No, absolutely. Right. Sorry for the delay. Thank you both very yeah, much. No worries. Chris, you got anything you want to add to this? No, sir. We're good. Yeah. Everybody take care. Be safe. All right. Thank, Thank you both. both. Thank you. Right I'll just take a minute from that highlight reel to hats off to Robin and to Lane, mm -hmm. who's yeah. passed out his budget. Just a put cautionary out. for the future. Yes. That operational reserve fund. Uh-huh. The money that is in there, that is all the money that is being used over the next years to subsidize mm -hmm. taxes. So yeah. do not spend it on anything else because that's what the taxpayers have voted for. So just yeah. be careful with that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, okay, so yeah, here we, <coughs> yay, here we are. All right. Right. Brookfield. Let me start presenting. All right. So it's really nice to be back and it's great to see some new faces as well, relatively new. <laughs> um, so um, I know you and our school community get our weekly newsletters, but having the opportunity to show and talk to you about what we've been doing over the last couple of months is just a really great way to illustrate the impact of your decision making on the ground level. So. Let's take a look at some of the great things that we've been doing. So the last time we saw each other, we've been really busy. Um, we completed our winter assessments, celebrated the holidays, enjoyed some really fun events with our school club. Um, our fourth grade did their NAEP testing this year, and then our super secret committee, I think I have a picture later on, um, uh, served uh, them ice cream after their, their special uh, testing day. Uh, we also had uh, the same committee surprise our staff with donuts and, and coffee. So we're really building that leadership within these uh, community, these committees that we have with the students. Um, you can see we've got this uh, darling little girl here dressed up for the 100th day of school, same, <laughs> same week as Valentine's Day, which is always a, a really fun week in our, the elementary schools. 
Um, in March, we prepared for our state testing and then held our community variety show, which was a first for our school. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that um, later on. And then our fifth and sixth graders did their bridge building contest with BTC. Um, and that was really lovely because usually that's middle school and up. So if they allowed our fifth graders to be a part of it, which um, they're really jazzed for next year because they're like, we know exactly what we're going to try in terms of getting the, the biggest uh, the biggest pound per pressure. Uh, so they're really excited about that for next year. So, you know, those are just a couple of the things plus, you know, our monthly farm to school lessons from the grant this year and then all of our grade level instruction. So our teachers and school club have been really busy and working hard providing these really engaging lessons and a variety of the activities for our students to become uh, those well-rounded citizens that we want. Uh, so farm to school, we've been, um, ha we've had a lot of community members come in this, the, the last few months to do some really great events. Uh, so we had Mary Lake, who is a uh, Brookfield resident. She came in and she did some wool felting and that was a huge hit. The kids loved it. So we bought some wool felting kits and distributed those before spring break so they could work on some wool felting when they went home. Um, and you know, we do have students who have sheep, so we're also getting like, hey, if you want to shear sheep and bring wool to school, then we'll, we'll have some wool felting activities to go and ha uh, do some more of that. Um, Blake is a local resident. He works for King Arthur Flower. He came in and made pizza dough with our kids, so then all the kids went home with pizza dough and, and families had dinner <laughs> ready to go for that evening, which was really nice. Um, and we also had Miss Ann come in during our maple sugaring season and the kids made maple uh, cookies while talking about the, the sugaring process. And then um, Dan Childs of Brookfield Bees came in to talk about his beekeeping operation in Brookfield, which was really fun. The kids had a great time. Um, and then we're like, why don't we have beehives? <laughs> like, I don't know about that one. <laughs> uh, so we have, uh, we have some really great events coming up to continue with our grant. We have uh, my nurse, Brooke Gray. She's doing an, uh, a, a lesson with our kids next week uh, using Hillside Farm Botanicals, which is in West Brookfield. Um, so kids will be making a little herb dip and then, um, you know, really talking up this really wonderful farm that we have. Um, and then we will be uh, we will be planting some trees. We got the farm uh, the farm to school fruit tree grant. Uh, we applied for that and received that. So just some additional funds to continue to add to this orchard that we're hoping to put on our property further past our uh, our uh, outdoor classroom. Uh, so we'll be planting those on the 22nd. So each class will have their own apple tree to plant. We're planting some butternut trees, and then we'll have some uh, some blueberry bushes as well that we're looking forward to planting too. Um, so that's the really wonderful stuff that's going on with Farm to School. We'll also be um, building some more garden beds to continue our um, our veggie growing season and just um, expand that and hopefully have a, uh, a, a way to uh, have Willie really buy our produce and then feed our kids with that produce in, in the school. So that would be great. Uh, so we'll be working on that in the next month and a half as well. Um, school club has been thriving. This is our PTO. Uh, we've had a lot of really fun events. We did a bonfire and hot cocoa and sledding event. So you can see some families and kids down here. We filled up some spray bottles with food coloring and they made some really fun sculptures. Uh, and then in March, we had our community variety show with a silent auction to raise funds for our school club. Uh, you know, the school club does a really wonderful job of funding for our artists and residents. They buy little um, gift cards or gift certificates for uh, the Scholastic Book Fairs uh, for the, the beginning of the summer, so kids have books to read when they go into the summer. And uh, so we needed to replenish those funds on top of the other donations that they do within our school. So uh, our, we had teachers uh, help with, have help from families to create these wonderful themed baskets. We had a bubble bath basket. You can see the this was the pre-K pizza night basket where they made a pizza banner. Uh, that you could hang up in your house for your pizza night. The fifth and sixth grade had a really cool international foods basket. 
Uh, there was an arts and crafts basket, so really wonderful things that families could, families and community members, we had community members show up for the community sh uh, variety show too, which was wonderful. Uh, they were able to uh, bid on these items throughout the show. We had seven acts, lots of kids and families performing. We even had um, our, one, of our, one of our teachers bring in their dog to, do, to show some, some different tricks. And so our, our, we had about 70 people come for that, per, that show. It was a great turnout. And in the end, we made uh, $1,200, which was wonderful. So yeah, it was a, it was a great event. We had a lot of fun, and the kids are already coming up with ideas of what they're going to do next year. I've had some community members reach out saying, you know, we would love to be one part of it too, so we're just going to make it bigger and better. Uh, we have, so that school club will also be working on an end of the school year event, which we'll talk about in a later slide. Data. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about data. It wasn't something that I presented on um, at the last presentation. So um, we are in the midst of our end of the year data uh, collection for Track My Progress and other end of the year benchmark assessments. Uh, so I don't have the end of the year data. We had to push that back because our state testing started so early this year. Um, and a big shout out to Todd and my staff for being able to flex the first week of testing. We were unable to test because we had a server issue. And Todd, a part, who's a part of our tech department, worked with Pearson and did such a wonderful job trying to remedy that as we were a little nervous about getting that testing done on time. Uh, and then our, our teachers flexed and were able to start that testing the next week and we didn't miss a beat and we were able to complete all of that within our window. Uh, so with that, uh, the, our December Track My Progress data, there has been an average percentage increase for um, ELA of 5% from September to December. And then for math, it's been a 4% increase from September to, to December. Um, historically, uh, we've, we've seen averages of 3.25% for ELA and then a 6% average. Um, in math over, I did the math for the last seven years for Brookfield. So my hope is that we will continue to make gains with this last, uh, this last assessment window and continue to boost up our, our percentage points. I'm hoping at least 5%, as you can see I've written there, at least 5% for ELA and at least another, another th or sorry, 3%, sorry. Um, for ELA and math, which would then hit us at about 70% meeting proficiency in math and 65 for ELA, which is, you know, getting us closer to those board ends, which is wonderful. Uh, and that will con just continue to be our push as we move into uh, the summer and planning for how we're going to continue to get those increases moving forward um, into next year with through our PLC work and PD work. Uh, we also... Um, you know, the Cogni assessments went really well. I'm really hopeful that we'll um, have some great scores with those. Um, NAEP, we won't find the specifics out about those since it's a national test, but um, we did receive praise from our testing coordinator um, and the proctor. They just said that our fourth graders were so respectful and friendly and very serious about their testing, so I can't imagine it'd be anything <laughs> but great stuff um, from them. Uh, so we are... Uh, you know, we're, what, 30, 30 something days out from the end of the school year, which is really wild to think. Um, wow. And it's gonna go really fast, but we have some wonderful things set up for our kids to uh, get them ready for summer. So we have our artist in residence, a, a, a family member, uh, excuse me, a, 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 a yeah, family member of our school is, uh, who is a local potter is doing some pinch pots and then we'll have an ice cream social and a summer, uh, reading event, reading challenge event to go along with that so that ice cream social. <coughs> Once the kids have glazed their pots and those are ready to come back to the kids. Uh, we'll of course have our fruit tree and bush planting happening in this month along with the garden um, bed building which will be another school club community event and the planting for our vegetable gardens um, with our classes and our after school program. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have our celebration of learning and supporting that learning over the summer with our family event, which we're looking forward to just getting, getting books in kids' hands and math activities to really help them 
have uh, s something to keep that learning going over this over the summer. So yeah. Um, any questions? Any any <coughs> comments? Any anything that you're wondering about with our wonderful little school? Sounds like that parent, you know, the, it's nice to hear the kind of reinvigoration of um, your parent group. I know that yeah. was historically really Yeah, my vibrant. goal yeah. my goal was to increase uh, increase the the membership. Mm -hmm. It was only four members, including David Roller last year. So it was pretty it's very small. <laughs> and so this year we're up to nine members and and you know, I'll just keep advertising for more and talking to you know, being the salesperson that I am to <laughs> come and, and support our, our wonderful school community and, and our kids. Mm -hmm. And hopefully expand it beyond just families, you know, I'll have other community members join too. So we'll see how that goes over the next year or so. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, yeah. thank you. As a parent who has gone to all of these, they've all gone off without a hitch and they're all excellent. And there's a lot of things I feel like you didn't talk about too, like, uh, there was the person from Vins who came in. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. My little girl got a real kick out of those owls. And, yeah, uh, She's yeah. been talking about those for a while. Yeah. Still. We, yeah, I bet, I bet, yeah. Yeah, that was a really fun event. Yeah, there's, I, I mean, I could go on and on about all the really wonderful things yeah. that we're doing in our school. I just wanted to highlight a few for you and show you some, you know, the, the great pictures that our staff take of our kids to just illustrate how the, the learning that we're doing and, and the really caring and supportive community that we are, so. Thanks. Thank, really good, Karen. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And for being open to coming to this meeting. We, yeah, we of course. And thank you, you so much meeting, for your so. flexibility and understanding last time. Yeah. Uh, that was a stressful situation, so I really appreciate your understanding and that and giving me that, that evening to, to deal with it. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Yeah, of course. Okay. Mika, I think you're up. Okay, good. Before. Thank you. You need to oh, oh do you do you have something to get to? Uh, no, I yes. can I can go after. Oh no, it's fine. Okay, God. All right. Okay. Yeah. You're all night, folks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. Well, I, I prepared a handout. I don't have a PowerPoint. Um, take one and pass it along. Thank you. Um, yeah, you're welcome. So I just wanted to touch on some of the highlights um, here at the end of our school year. Some of the things that we are really proud of that are happening at Randolph Union. Um, so one of the things is that we have more students staying at RU and our enrollment in AP classes are is going up. AP tests are happening right now um, this week. So that's really present on my my mind um, and we have a number of offerings one of the things that we've learned is that some of the more selective and competitive schools really prefer to see students challenging themselves in AP classes as opposed to accessing um, early college and um, dual enrollment classes so we have students who do those things as well and I think that's really exciting it's especially um, a great opportunity for students who you know may not go to college if they don't take that opportunity to get that free year under their belt as seniors etc um, but we have been working hard to create more rigorous opportunities here at school and also have our seniors in-house so that they're modeling you know for our younger students and we have a greater sense of community so that's been a goal and we are seeing that bear fruit here at school um, we do have a class of 2024 Instagram account where students are communicating their plans for their future if you haven't followed it yet it's really heartening to see what they're what they're doing and what their next steps are going to be um, we've been working really hard to have more inclusive after school programming. Um, Nick Bent is in his second year as our athletic director here. Uh, we've been hovering around, or we had been after COVID, 65% um, of our students taking part in after school activities. His goal is to get that number up to 85%. And so we have really been focusing on you know, helping students understand that we have a late bus available and that they can get a ride home if they stay after school for tutoring or if they stay after school for our dance classes, which are happening after school or 
Are You Rockin', which is our own rock band made up of students and staff. Um, also our theater program, I don't know if any of you saw Matilda um, last weekend, but it really was well done and a fabulous effort considering last year our band program consisted of six students and our choral program um, fluctuated between three and six depending on um, what students were able to fit into their schedule. So we're happy to have more music in the building and to have put on a musical this year that that was a great performance and the sets were student made the costumes all of the makeup so it, it was just an impressive effort from my eight-year-old thought it was so cool yes <laughs> and we um hosted all of the elementary schools on may 2nd which was delightful mm -hmm. and it was delightful for our performers as well because the younger members of the audience definitely gasped at different parts of the performance <laughs> and laughed at different parts of the performance than um, adults do. And we were trying to thank Lauren McEwen, who graduated from Randolph Union High School, and myself. We were trying to think when the last time was that we had a completely full house, because we did when we had yeah. all the elementary schoolers here, so it was very exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing that you didn't mention is they did this multimedia thing. Yes. Where they had this screen come down and it was like shadow puppets. And yeah. That was so cool. And then as a parent, when they did that piece where they, oh were, they were singing about when they were young and they were putting pictures yep, of the right. kids yeah. when but the real kids that were the actors. Were singing, actresses yeah. Actresses and actors. Singing, I was like, man, if I was. <laughs> it was pretty emotional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It was very. It was very neat. It was so interesting to see, kind of that new, new way of doing things. Mm -hmm. so well, they got that was awesome. brand new setup with audio and video and all the electronics mm -hmm. in there and the new screen, which was kind of cool. Yeah. It's really, so, really cool. Yeah, yes. They did a good job setting that up. Yep, so that it, it's been fabulous. Um, so we've been increased our after school offerings um, to make sure that we are providing interesting activities for students with a variety of interests. So not just the typical athletic offerings that one might think of, um, so that we really get as many students engaged as possible. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about last week, I got data from last year's um, graduation rate. After COVID, we had dipped from 97% graduation rate down to 88%. So, you know, the struggle that was seen across the nation in terms of getting students into school and supporting them to graduate really impacted us as well. Um, the early data on the class of um, 2023 shows us that we're back up to 95%. Nice. So that, um, you know, it's relevant in that we're talking about live human children and their capacity to persevere through obstacles and complete high school, mm -hmm. which is really important to me. And I think it's important to our community um, for us to graduate students who not only complete high school, but one of our goals here at Randolph Union is for every student to have a plan for what they will do after high school. Some students choose to go immediately into the world of work, some go to tech, tech colleges, um, and some go to universities and, and more traditional colleges. And um, we want everybody to graduate with a plan. So that's really the goal of our student services department, and it's really exciting to see that all unfold. Um, today, our 10th graders, another goal of our student services department is so that every grade level accesses a college campus, just to see what the possibilities are. Um, today, our 10th graders visited UVM. They had a wonderful trip. They met up with some of our, our students who have graduated and you know came to see them at lunchtime, and they were able to tour the campus and think about that particular college. Typically, our seventh graders will go to CCV. Um, then it used to be eighth grade goes to Castleton. We're sort of reconfiguring as the state college system reconfigures. Um, so we'd go to CCV, VTC, Castleton, 
Um, the 10th grade goes to UVM, and then the 11th and 12th graders do a trip to Boston, where typically they tour Northeast, Northeastern, Bridgewater State. Um, I think there's one other one that I'm missing, so. Um, but it's a more comprehensive tour just to Boston and, and to see other New England colleges. That's so great mm -hmm. that you're giving that access. Yeah, I didn't know you did that. Yeah. And starting in seven. That's yeah, we've, we've been doing that for a long time. Again, during COVID, a lot of college mm -hmm. campuses closed yeah. up. Um, so last year, we really prioritized getting our older students back on college campuses. And, and we're continuing to like roll that through the various age groups um, in order to make sure that everybody gets a chance to be on a college campus and understand that maybe they could fit there too. Mm -hmm. um, we are incredibly fortunate to have a community that supports world travel opportunities. Um, so far this school year, we have hosted a group from Cuxhaven, Germany. Um, they go to a technical school there, similar to RTCC, and they come here and visit us. They went to visit the tech center. They made apple pie um, in the culinary program and had a great visit. We also have in the past sent students to Germany. This year we had a PBL that really looked at teaching and learning. Um, they had to be, the prerequisite was that they had to be at least a Spanish three student and they had to take a PBL to f our pro project based learning opportunity to focus on teaching other people. So they took a service trip to Peru and they went into summer camps and schools and taught school children about Vermont, um, which was really exciting. And they loved it mm -hmm. and brought back their learning to our community here. We also were able to get grant funding. Um, Heather has worked pretty tirelessly to help us support this program um, so that we have 13 students who became certified scuba divers last summer. And in January, they were able to live on a boat for a week and um, clean coral so that coral that's been genetically engineered to be able to survive in warmer, um, more salty water um, can serve, be grafted onto it and can survive and hopefully reestablish healthy coral reefs. So um, I'm grateful to the teachers who are willing to travel with our kids and the community members who support all of their fundraising endeavors. Um, this, I believe, is the 33rd year of our Shizukuishi Exchange Project. Are you a Shizukuishi? No, 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 but okay. I, do re I do remember when okay. the existing logo was was, was founded created. when I was a student, yeah. 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 Um, it's been a while. Yeah. So um, we will be sending a group back to Shizukuishi for the first time since the COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic. Nice. Um, Japan shut down tremendously um, during the pandemic. And so we haven't been able to get into schools. We did send three students last summer, but they weren't able to do the school visits that are so meaningful. This January, we hosted 13 students from Shizukuishi. They come in and stay in homes and then in um, and with our students. And then in June, we will send eight students back. We have a smaller number this time around because just the price of world travel mm -hmm. has gone way up. Um, so we're spending the same amount as we used to, but we're, we're sending about four students less. Um, so that's been exciting, and I know that that's something that when we poll our students, we now do a twice a year student engagement survey. Um, just the opportunity for international travel means a lot to our kids. The applications are um, submitted without student names or identifiers on them, and they're scored by a panel who truly doesn't know um, who the students are who are applying. And then um, of that applicant pool, we interview students, and no student is asked to pay to go on these trips. It's all done through fundraising or through budgeted funds that have been set aside for international travel. So I think that really expands the world for some of our students in ways that are incredibly special and don't happen in necessarily every public school. So we should be proud of that. Um, we continue to work with our advisories um, and SEL lessons, get pushed into advisory. 
our project-based learning program has grown again this year, so we're back on a positive trajectory. They now have an advisory board for project-based learning on their own that it, you know, brings in community members, ha focuses on student voice. Our racial justice PBL has done um, microaggressions training here for teachers at Randolph Union Middle High School and they have also gone to train teachers in the Lamoille School District and train teachers and students in the Lebanon Middle School um, related to what microaggressions look like and how you should respond if you see something unkind happen. Um, so that's been important work for them and they are, are phenomenal presenters. It, it's really impressive to see what our students um, can do when they feel really empowered and they've done some solid research informing their presentations. This year is part of our 8th and 10th grade portfolio defense process. Um, the 10th grade team has required students to document at least 10 hours of community service, which has been real pain in the neck for some of our kids um, but it also has led our students to really think about their community and think about the ways in which they engage with community and I think it I know it has also you know shifted some perceptions of what and who teenagers are in our community just because of the positive things that they have been doing so um, portfolio defenses will happen at the end of May as well as senior project defenses, which will happen on the afternoon of May 24th. Um, on the tomorrow night will be our annual Night of the Arts. That's when um, more artistic or performative senior projects get shown um, off in the auditorium. And then our celebration of learning will happen on the evening of May 23rd. That's when all of our academic content areas display the, the things that they've been working on all year, as well as our senior project displays will be set up here in the Media Center. Senior project is our capstone, and every student who receives an RUHS diploma completes one. So even if they access early college, if they choose not to take the diploma from the state of Vermont, and they want an RUHS diploma, they still have to follow through on senior project. Um, we also, we just open up our whole campus and it's really a delight, so I hope that you will all join us for that event. Um, it kicks off, I believe, at 5 p.m. So, um, the things that we're continuing to focus on are building community. We know that students who feel a great sense of belonging um, are more effective community members and learners. Helping students map their educational pathways, that's really important to us. We are proud to offer them opportunities in our Innovation Center, which this year has really taken on some new life and at our Celebration of Learning will be on display. It's run by alumni Nasser Abdel Fattah and Tom Zani, and students have really shown a lot of mastery in terms of using our laser cutter um, with 3D printing, and it's just been really exciting to see the enthusiasm unfold in that space over the course of the year. Um, we are, we're planning to offer uh, content area specific diplomas within the next few years. We've been working on it and chewing on it, so we'd offer like a STEM diploma, a humanities diploma for students who have really chosen to shape their pathway in a specific direction. Um, the work of helping students to learn to self-regulate and care for themselves and others is tireless and it's something we continue to engage in every single day. And then also supporting staff um, as we, we work with students who come to school not necessarily prepared to learn but work to help them become prepared to learn. Um, this year we have very few staff members leaving RUHS, which is really exciting for us. I think, you know, it helps us build good momentum when we can keep staff from year to year. It's been very challenging in the post-COVID world to um, really feel like we're hiring a lot of staff every single year. So 
to only have two or three hiring committees going feels pretty good. <laughs> um, so those are the things that we're, we're focused on. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. I do. I'm totally interested by the diplomas with a like concentration. Mm -hmm. Is that something that um, I've never heard of? That is that something that that colleges and universities like to see? Is that the impetus yeah. behind it? Or? I, I mean, I think so. I, Heather knows quite a bit about this as well. But colleges and universities really look at the transcript mm -hmm. above everything in the school profile. Uh, I do know that when students already know what their path is, uh, I'm thinking about a student who took all of our computer programming and coding classes and went to Champlain College to make video games. And I, I know that in that sort of specialized program, having like a STEM stamp on his diploma or a computer sciences stamp mm -hmm. means something. And, and there can be a portfolio that's developed in that specialized way that people who are looking for students who who are highly qualified to come into their programs are looking for. Yeah. Cool. So we were able to uh, launch this in a very um, easy way last year because Vermont has adopted something called the seal of biliteracy. Mm -hmm. And we had a student, or Lisa from your, yeah, who graduated last year who had, um, was a native Spanish speaker. Um, and graduated with the seal of biliteracy. So that's a great model for this type of thing. They have the scope and sequence of courses. There's an assessment at the end that demonstrates competency, and they get this seal on their diploma. And so other districts around us are doing, doing it for different concentrations. Um, and so starting with a scope and sequence that we already have in place, guide students in a way to sort of like intentionally take on uh, a challenging scope and sequence of coursework to achieve this this seal are you planning to start with stem we so stem is where we've been most heavily focused we, we were fairly far down the pathway last school year and then we ended up replacing essentially the staff that yes. was working in the innovation center so it felt like a lot to task a brand new team with jumping right into that. Yeah. Um, but they are moving really swiftly in directions that are positive, and so that's something that we've kept on their minds, and I continually um, am excited to have be a part of what we do. Um, you mentioned, we heard earlier that Jason Finley is leaving. Is okay. there a plan to bring another assistant principal on board, or? Yep, we're in a hiring process right now. Um, we've interviewed a few people. We'll interview someone else tomorrow. Um, my hope is that we'll have a candidate that we can bring to our leadership team meeting on next Tuesday so that you know our teacher leaders can meet with that individual, and then to our advisory board our parent and family advisory board meeting next Tuesday evening. Um, we're trying to be pretty thorough, but also move quickly because this time of year, mm -hmm. people get hired really rapidly. Yeah. But maintaining that same model. Yeah. Um, well, it's a little bit different. Um, I think that what, what I'm noticing is that it would be helpful to have somebody really dedicated to focusing on behavior and student leadership. So we've branded it as a dean of student experiences, mm -hmm. really focusing on students and you know a variety of their successes, but also supporting them mm -hmm. when things don't go as planned. Great. Okay. Any other questions from the board? No? Great, right. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, OK, Nika. I gotta go. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Um, but Kara, can I possibly switch with you so I can plug in my computer? Thank you so much. I will be brief um, because I know that many of you um, already heard my longer uh, presentation. Thank you so much. While Nika's getting set up, did we see that email from uh, Kyle? I think about. Reaching out to Bev Taft if we wanted no, to be on. That, that, that was you. No, you just yeah. have to Kara, I'm sorry. connect to. Um, yeah, yeah, about the, being part of the. Connected. Yeah, but I thought I had to plug in, but I don't. I'm sorry. Pre approval. Um, senior project. Senior project pre approval. Uh, 
members. Somebody's yeah. been on the panel. Yeah. yeah. She wants yeah. more members. So I, yeah. I offered to be a part of that. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I love senior projects. It's, yeah. it's during the day. It's probably going to be about four days, but if multiple people wanted to do it. She likes to have a board member, or she okay. would like to have a board member, um, as well as some community members. So. Sorry. I had done it last year, but I'm not Representing the board, I was just there, and she happened to mention that I was also I am a board member, but I'm not. I'm just there as a community member who happens to also be a board member, and so she asked me, and I said no, I'm going to be away, and I said, would you like it to be a board member as well as other community members? And she said yeah, and I said okay, I'll ask other board members see if anybody's available and wants to do it. It's not an official board role. Okay. It's just volunteering and you happen to be a board member. You're not saying anything related to the board. It's not board work. It's volunteering to do school work. Thank you for clarifying. Take it away. Nika. Yeah. Yes. Would you say? Take it away. Oh, okay. I was <laughs> like, what? Who's going away? Okay. Um, so, uh, all right. So, every two years, um, we are reviewing um, the CLNA, and right this year, we are at a review stage, and so in two years, we'll do the full CLNA. Um, so, you could look at it as also like the CLNA light this year. Um, so the CLNA is the Comprehensive Local Needs Assessment, happens every two years. We've got these six components that we look at, um, the student performance and um, accountability data that's disaggregated by race, gender, special populations and categories, um, how the CTE programs align to labor market needs, the size, scope, quality um, and quality of each program. Um, the progress that we make towards implementing the program of studies in real life, um, an analysis of our strategies for recruitment, retention, and training of CTE staff as well as underrepresented groups, um, and our progress towards implementation of equal access to high quality CTE programs for all students. Um, this graph, which I know that you probably cannot read at all, um, basically it shows us um, the each of those different categories and it shows us the 2022 um, numbers 2023 and then the average so because our testing hasn't happened yet our um, work keys testing has not happened yet this year we do not have the numbers for how much growth we have shown this year um, with our efforts that our ELA and math teachers have put forth so instead of having one large math class that would have many, many students, we had very small math classes that have anywhere between four and eight students, uh, maybe nine at the most. Um, and so the teachers are able to give really personalized instruction to the students, and they have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the students. Um, so that was new and improved this year. But one thing that we are seeing is this trend that's showing us that our math and ELA scores are really quite low. And in fact, out of all the tech centers in the state of Vermont, we are the lowest. Um, and one of the, the things for me that um, is, is an easy and obvious thing that we can improve is that we can have math and ELA more than twice a week. So this is my first year in this role when I came to the tech center. Um, 
you know, there was sort of this idea of don't change too much and let's see how things go. And so we did two days a week of math and two days a week of ELA. Um, and then throughout the year, as time went on, we started integrating more math and ELA into the programs um, delivered by the program teachers. Um, but what we're really seeing, I think, is a trend towards we're not competitive enough in terms of math and ELA. So next year, there'll be four days of math, four days of ELA, plus math and ELA integrated into program content by program instructors with, my plan is, a fifth day callback day where we can say, you owe these three assignments, you're currently not passing, call back to the teacher, you're gonna do these assignments before you can go back into your program. Mm. That way it'll help um, mitigate a situation where you run into it's the end of semester one, mm -hmm. a student has not passed math at all for quarter one and quarter two, and now you're running into this situation where it's like, is this learning environment working for this person? Can they keep up with the math? Are they putting in their best effort? Do they need to go back to their sending school because they're not earning credit? So if we have this new model for next year, it will eliminate a lot of those questions and give the students the, the time to do the best work that they can and also for them to see how serious we are and the fact that we are amping up the grit and the we're raising the bar and we're going to be expecting more academically from students because we want to put out a really good worker and a really good student that's ready for career and for college. The other thing that we're, and I'll, I'll keep moving, I'll, I'm a talker so I'll try and limit the talking, um, but if you look at this chart here, you will see that there are two programs, education services and criminal justice that are giving college credit um, and there are the ones in the blue are giving IRCs. What I want to see for next year and what the state recommends is that there are college credits offered in all programs so that there's equity across the board. No matter what program you take, you have an opportunity to earn college credit. I think everybody should have that opportunity. For one, it, things should be equal across the board, but secondly, I think that just knowing that you can take a college class and earn credit in high school, you may decide that you're gonna graduate from the electrical program and you're gonna go to work because that's your goal right now, but in 10 years you may decide that you're done with you know, walking around, you know, in, in attics and basements and, and, you know, it's hard on your body and maybe you want to teach or maybe you want to do something different with your, with your career, that you've already completed some college credit, so you know you can do it. So if you could do it in high school, you can do it when you're an adult. So just giving them the feeling that they have the ability and they've done it and they can do it again. Um, rather than feeling like, oh, college is not for me. I could never get through a college class. Well, yeah, you can. You will, because you're going to school here, and this is a part of the class. So um, just, it's going to increase, it's going to just make them feel better about themselves, and they're going to have college credits. That's that much fewer classes they have to pay for when they do go to college at some point, if that's what their choice is. So anyways, everyone needs to have equal access to those credits. Um, this here is... Uh, is a graph that shows some of the things that I just said, but it also shows um, work-based learning. Uh, so if you look over the one, two, three, four, fifth uh, orange one over is work-based learning, which is offered in every program except pre-tech, because the kids are doing exploratory in pre-tech. Um, you'll see if you move over to the right two from there, um, our equipment, Technology and software all meets the current and future needs of our industry. We're really lucky because um, we have Perkins funding, which allows us to get some of the really wonderful things that we need. In fact, today we were working on um, purchasing an updated diesel truck for our diesel program um, that has like all the modern bells and whistles and things that, that students need to learn how to work on. Um, so we're working every year on getting updated equipment so on a rotating basis so that everybody has what they need to be competitive when they go into the workplace. Um, over here, okay, this is where you're gonna really see, I don't even think I got into this before, so I'm glad I got a second chance here. Um, this is where you're gonna see your math and ELA industry work keys benchmark numbers. So I just wanna explain what this is. So really small, but here, so automotive technology, it says two out of 11. What that means is that there's 11 students and two of them 
met the math work keys benchmark. Two out of 11. Is that five or higher? Oh, what? What's the, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. Um, in ELA, only one out of the 11 men. Yes, I know what you're saying now. Yes, yes, she's right. Five, six, and seven. So the high score you can get on work keys is seven. So five, six, or seven means that you've earned an IRC and, um, and that means you've met the benchmark. So yes, two people out of 11 got a five or higher. Mm -hmm. And an IRC is an industry recognized credential, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Oh. And that one counts as a tier two. That's why you're seeing the numbers you didn't understand in construction trades. Mm -hmm. if, sure if they score a five or higher, uh -huh. it counts as a tier two IRC. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're like, Oh, that was about NCER. Um, yeah. So, um, so anyways, if you look at our numbers, if you can see them from there, um, they're, you know, diversified agriculture, five out of 15 um, in math. Uh, diesels, five, no, that's an eight. I can't even see it, I'm right in front of it. No, it's a six. Out of I can't read, a six out of 12. Mika, if you close the yeah. people frame uh, people. in the upper right, uh, right. you might have a, more screen space. Where are you at? I'm gonna do it on oh. this computer right oh. here. What do we do? Um, close the white window. Close this? Yeah, X out. Oh. And then I'll give you some more oh, space. Thank you. Okay, very good. Um, two out of 11 in manufacturing and fabrication, one out of five in dental assisting. You see where I'm going with this. We need to spend more time doing math in ELA. Um, so it's, I, ooh, here. I knew it was a, something to work on, I didn't realize it was quite to this degree. But now that we know, we have a plan. Um, so moving forward here, um, we have, um, we did lots of surveys that helped um, us gather data. Um, and so this one was on professional <coughs> development um, and recruitment and retention. Um, so kind of taking a temperature on how staff were feeling. Um, we did not get all staff members to participate, but um, your blue is agree and your um, red is neutral. Um, so there's questions like number, the first one top left is I enjoy working at RTCC. Um, equipment, materials, and technology are keeping with industry standards is the one next to it there to the right, right here. Um, so, and I did share this before, but this was taken, um, this is snapshot in time taken in the late fall. Um, I don't know if perhaps now things might be different, but we do have a lot of new staff this year, and we did not have everybody participate. So that was one of my goals, is to get more participation in surveys in the future. Um, this is just a snapshot of PD, um, and PD that we're planning on excited about this CAD training. Um, we're hoping to bring a um, design engineer onto our staff who's worked with CAD throughout his career and hoping that he can provide, or we've talked to him about providing um, training for staff where that is applicable. I'm very excited about that and excited to continue um, math and ELA integration. And I should also mention that not only are we doubling the amount of days that students have math and ELA, but we are also continuing to integrate it into their programs. So on the same day that they have math and ELA, at some point in the day, they're also gonna go back to their class and have program-specific math, specific to what they're learning in their program. So lots and lots of math and ELA. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing that I do want people to know um, is that this isn't easy. It's not easy for a student to be successful in at RTCC because they're gonna have to work really hard and I'm, I'm not just being so honest I just want everyone to know we need to work hard because we need to get better at the things that that we're not super successful at yet but it's a yet it will get better so just kind of like with the cell phones at the beginning of the year where um, I was a little nervous about saying no phones you know put them in those clear boxes when you walk in gone well it's gone really well the kids are used to it as long as you let them know what you expect really kids tend to rise to the occasion and they're gonna be so proud of themselves when they do so much better in math and ELA we just gotta get to the point where they get the buy-in and and they go for it you know what I mean they work hard because they're gonna love they love being in our school they don't want to leave 
so they're going to work hard so they can stay there. So I'm expecting to see a huge improvement in these scores this time next year. So keep moving. Um, this is all about how are we recruiting and um, getting new applicants. Uh, we're somewhere around 120 accepted students. We had many more applicants, but we did have a pretty um, rigorous rubric that encompassed um, discipline, uh, absences, grades, uh, recommendations from counselors, um, and the, the answers to the questions that the students wrote themselves. And then students were um, given a number, uh, they were graded on a rubric, and then assigned a number based on the total score. That number put them into accepted, not accepted, and waitlisted. And then we let people know that if you weren't accepted this year, these are the things that you can work on so that you can come back next year, reapply, we hope you do. Um, so that is where we're at here. Um, this is uh, our student survey. Um, blue is good. Um, so there's a lot of blue. Um, my program teacher treats me with respect. Um, the numbers are really small, but it's like 98.3%. Um, students in my program treat me with respect, so that's kids talking about other kids. Um, I feel safe in the hallways at RTCC. Um, I'm engaged in my program at RTCC. So um, I did have 81 responses out of 126 students, so um, you know not everyone responded, but the responses we got. You know, we're really nice to see. What was that question where there was more? Yes, uh, I do not experience discrimination at RTCC based upon my race, color, creed, disability, sex, or gender, national origin, marital status, sexual orientation, or gender identity. 71.6% agree. Nine, um, Two. thank you, 9.2% said um, that they disagree and then Gosh, what is that number? 11.5 said it's not applicable. Um, so that, that's that one. Okay. Um, this is like my favorite slide. Uh, these are, this was the results of a survey. Um, <laughs> surveying students from sending schools who chose not to come to RTCC. Why did you choose not to come? These were my favorite personal responses. Um, cell phones are not allowed. I thought that one was really cute. Because um, cell phones are really important to kids. I don't think it's a reason not to come to RTCC, but that was one of the reasons. Um, my friends are at my current school. A teacher or a counselor told me it would not be a good decision. Um, I thought a CTE course would not look at my transcript. My parents don't support it. The program I wanted was full. Um, so these are all, you know, the cell phone thing, yeah. You know, you can have it at lunch and in passing times, but otherwise, no. We put our phones away so we can concentrate on work. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are reasons that not everybody is going to enroll in RTCC, and it may not be for everybody, and that's okay, and especially when you look at, like, what other high schools are doing, like, there's a lot of great things happening across all of these districts, so, you know, what fits one person may not fit everybody, and that's totally cool. So, yeah. Um, current RTC parent guardian survey, so this was only, again, 18 responses, so, you know, I think maybe I could do a better job at saying, you know, letting people know how important their responses are on surveys. Um, I think a lot of times I know for myself I was guilty of not responding to a survey for my child's school because I was like, I'm fine with everything. I don't even have, I don't have anything to complain about. So I was just like, it's fine, delete. Um, but I think that whether you're whether your feedback is positive, negative, or neutral, it's important to weigh in. So even myself as a parent, I am guilty of that. Um, but my child is in a safe and healthy learning environment at RTCC, 77.8% said that they agree. Um, the neutral um, doesn't have a number, probably not many, because overall it's 18 responses, but your disagree is 16.7%. Um, RTCC staff have been helpful in discussing and planning my child's learning experience. And um, you see that there is 22.2% uh, disagree, and that was in my last presentation, one area where I identified that we could improve is um, creating personalized learning plans for students before they leave, but there's still time to do that. So um, I plan to, to do a, a small version of that, but a, a better version next year. Um, so keep moving through. 
This is the really important part, I think, um, because as a result of this CLNA survey, it really did what it was supposed to do, which was to get us thinking about what are we doing good, what are we doing not so good, and you know what could we what could we do to um, to increase the outcomes for the students. So, number one, we're going to improve the math and ELA scores. We're going to increase the number of students that are attending college after RTCC, and college meaning encompassing whether it's a tech career, uh, a tech college, or a traditional college, whatever their term, um, post-secondary education. We're going to increase the number of college credits that are offered in each program so that it's like clearly equitable across the board no matter what program you're in. Um, we're going to increase the overall access to Tier 2 IRCs. We're going to keep on working. We did a good job this year, I think, of increasing math integration and ELA integration into program content. We're going to continue doing a good job with that. Um, we're going to increase the math PD that was provided to teachers. We started in the winter um, really working on that. It was a, a teacher had said, I'd really like to have some more PD on how to integrate math into my class. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's a good idea. So um, we did a good job. We're going to continue with that. Um, same thing with the ELA PD. I really want to improve the survey participation in the future. I think I could do, definitely do a better job of explaining how important the feedback is. No matter what your feedback is, it's super important, so please weigh in. Um, increasing the number of non-traditional students in each program. Um, and in the full presentation, um, which is over there, um, I lay out uh, my proposals and ideas for how to do that. So for each program that does not have the numbers that the state would really like to see, I have some exciting or ideas that I'm excited about um, for how to improve that situation. Um, the recruitment of faculty with a bachelor's degree or higher, and I think that's important because it's easier for you as a teacher to talk about why it's important to take these college classes and to do well here in our college classes while at RTCC if you yourself have attended college or have done college classes. Um, that also means that they can teach college courses. So like if you have a master's degree, you can teach a dual enrollment class, for instance. So um, I think that's just that's just a really positive thing to add to our staff. Um, and we want to promote literacy strategies through program teachers. And so our curriculum coordinator did a great job this year. He worked um, on like all the time. There were constantly Wall Street Journal articles, New Zella articles coming through that were all like tech related, um, important information with prompts. So like you read the article with your class and then you can answer it and it's all like embedded within the program. So it's embedded ELA in your individual program. Some teachers use that and I would go into classrooms and see kids doing whatever the, the today's Wall Street Journal article was and others not as much. Um, so I'd like to see that more across the board. Um, just because it was, it was, it's so cool. It's cutting edge stuff and it's great like conversation starters. Um, and last but not least, I want to see more integrated science proficiencies into our program content because aside from the math and ELA, our, our science is definitely not where it needs to be either. Um, and we can do better. So we have lots of plans for how we will do better we also have many new staff members coming on board next year, or hopefully they're in the process of coming on board. Um, really excited, we have some program changes. We have one person who's switching from one program to another that's gonna bring just like a new energy to the program. Um, we just have a lot of excitement and hope and joy for the coming year. And um, yeah, I just, I'm really excited about where this is going. And um, I think the one thing about when, when things aren't the best, it gives you an opportunity to improve. And so, glass half full, we're gonna make some progress. Mm -hmm. And that's it, thank you. Thank, thank you, thank Nika. Thank you. Nika, what do you need noted in the agenda uh, minutes for the CLNA? Oh, approval oh gosh, yes, right, thank so you. It's, 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 it's in the consent agenda. agenda. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. I'm terrible at all of this. Please ask away. You may not know. Okay. I'm just <laughs> curious. Do it. The, um, well, those who identify, um, the gender split of, of enrollment at RTCC. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. So it really, 
vary so much by program. So overall, oh, okay. we have more females than, so our, fem our numbers of females and gender expensive students are increasing overall. However, it is still the, a fact that, I'll give you an example of health careers. Mm -hmm. we, it's all females. But next year, we're going to have a male teacher. So perhaps that will help. And, and with that male teacher, there's going to be some different um, avenues that are going to be explored in, in health careers that are currently not on the table. So maybe that will help draw some other folks into the program. Um, in education services, it's all females. Mm -hmm. um, so... <laughs> You look around and, and many, or I want to say the majority of our teachers are male. Men are interested in teaching. It might just be hard when you're the only one there in a classroom full of people identified as female. So I don't know. We're going to kind of mix things up. We're also integrating some more like outdoor education um, and some just PE education, like turn it, more high school education. like counseling, school counseling, um, getting just some different aspects of education in there um, that might make the program more marketable. And then you look at something like ag, where we have two females in ag. Next year, I believe there's three or four that have applied, which is a nice improvement. Um, and uh, then, oh, I, a good example of a nice split is film, um, which is, I think, like, split right down the middle. Mm. Um, so it, we're, we're shaking it up a little bit though. Like we're gonna change things, we're gonna um, use uh, promotional materials to just to, to make it more inclusive for all, regardless of your gender, um, and just to show people having fun. Mm. Like people having fun and doing cool stuff. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your gender is, just come and have fun, do cool stuff. Practice your math in ELA. <laughs> get excited. Like build things. Be kind. Like, like come be part of what we're doing. So yeah, we're gonna work on that. Thank you. Yeah, I just thank you, you know, for I was, asking. I was struck by the one of the reasons they didn't end up coming here is because a teacher or a school counselor. Told I know them it makes me sad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, yeah. it makes me wonder if there's kind of different messaging or different. I think so. um, Nudging. Yeah. based on something and the first thing that comes to my brain is oh is it gender so I'm, yeah, yeah totally I'm just curious. well one of the things because i was worried about that when i first started one of the things that we did this year was that myself and the school counselor went um to each of the sending schools so each of the six schools we made appointments and met with um, the school counselors and the principals of those schools just to get to know them because like you know you start talking with someone in an email, you don't really know who you're talking to. I've got a weird name, it's like who, what is, what is Anika? I don't know. <laughs> so we just went out and, and tried to make a connection and like showed them how excited we are about what we're doing. And it helped a lot, like our communication mm. with the sending schools, I feel like I talked to most of them all the time um, and it's really positive and I feel like they get to know us and then they can see your heart, you know, like they can see what you're about, we're not just, a name and an email or a school that they've never visited. Um, we're real people and we're here to like work together and they, they see that, you know? We're not perfect, but we love what we do. And I think that makes a difference, mm -hmm. you know? And then they can talk about like, yeah, I've met the counselor, I've met the director, I've met this teacher or that teacher. It's really nice people. I think you're gonna get along with them really well, you know what I mean? Or they're like, you're totally crazy, one or the other. Um, but either way, I hope it's positive and, and we're gonna continue to do that and go out and meet them in the fall and then go back and recruit in the winter. Thanks. The element of college being added in uh, CC is, is really important to be, and I think that yes. goes a long way to you know, breaking maybe a, a long-held reputation. You know, back when I was a student here, Going to the tech center meant you'd go there because you weren't going to be in a traditional liberal arts college. Uh, it was like, are you planning on going to college or are you planning on going into a trade? Right. It was very binary, but you're making a little bit more, you know, options. option, optional, and and then, yeah. and so I think that that goes a long way um, so to breaking breaking that not necessarily a stigma, mm -hmm. but maybe some of these preconceived notions that some of these counselors or other teachers might say, like, oh, no, that's not a good fit for you because you're college bound. No, the, the, <laughs> right. the tech center right. is a good fit for you because you're because college bound. Because you're college yeah. bound. 
Yeah. And I think that's great. And I appreciate yeah. your comment. And also, you <clears throat> don't know when you're 17 or 18 years old, which you might want to do when you're 30 or 40 or 50. You don't know, right? Because you don't know yourself. You haven't lived yet to that point. So it's like, why cut off your options? Keep mm. them all open. Yeah. And then, right? So I think just growth mindset is really what we want to think about for the kids, but also for the folks who work at the sending schools too. Like, keep a growth mindset about yourselves and the students you work with. Mm -hmm. so you never know. Thank you. Sorry, I told you. Thank you all. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you all Thank you. for coming to see us. This Thanks. is really important and helping the Thanks board feel directly about schools. Happy to be invited. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. It doesn't work here. I think you got a question. Oh, thank you. Um, so we're going to move on to second review of ENDS report. The ENDS report. Lane, you want to take it away? Yeah, I can talk for a little bit. So I, I um, was able to get the final data, which was good. Um, so the, the report's complete. I sent it out to the board about two weeks ago, because uh, there's not like an official presentation tonight in case there's questions. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of just basic overview pieces of this is remembering that this is looking at last year's data, so 22-23. Um, I expect that this year's data, when compared to the state, is going to look pretty darn good. Um, remember though, uh, next year when you're looking back, that the testing is done a month and a half earlier this year than previous years. So comparing it to the state will be valid, but comparing it to previous data that's here may or may not be. Um, the only data uh, that the state hasn't really gotten caught up with that's in there is the attendance and the graduation rate data. Uh, what you're looking at is data from 21-22. Uh, that's the earliest, except for the graduation piece that just came out about a day ago um, that uh, Lisa was talking about. It's actually up at 95%, which is really, really good. Uh, Can I ask why that testing time frame is, is shifting? Just because it's the state and they like, to, look up they like to keep it, they like to keep us guessing. Uh, my guess is, is that they're thinking that if they do it a little bit earlier, maybe they can get the data back in people's hands Super. before the school year's over so you can fix if, you know, the kids are behind on something. Um, I did talk with mm -hmm. Crystal yesterday. There's no indication that that's going to happen. I was going to say, traditionally, that, that data's pretty, been quite delayed. Yeah. Um, oh, in terms of actually getting the numbers? Um, yeah, I think you're going to see a lot more of it because you've got a new ed secretary and all of that. So I had, I had just one question that sure. came to mind just as I was looking at it again. Um, when, you're, when you're looking at the percent of proficient students, mm -hmm. um, are you excluding students on education plans? No. So when, when we look at that overall data, yeah. they're all together. So that includes students on 504, students on IEPs. Yeah. So everybody. Do they, is there a modification at all to scores, say for a student on an IEP? No. No, so okay. it's what they get. Um, the other thing is because we're looking at the district as a whole, when I do these calculations, they are weighted averages, right? If I've got 30 third graders and 60 12th graders, the 12th graders are going to have a bigger impact on the overall average than right? So right. the student number. So it is, it is a very accurate number that you've got. Right. So um, when you're looking at that data, do we have enough numbers when you're looking like across the district, like mm -hmm. all third graders? Yeah. When you look at, say, can you, th it, does that data come to us where you break it out by? Yeah, I can send you the, students, I can send you the broken report. Yeah. Students who so you might can see high have school. learning challenges, students who are, have no learning challenges. I bet you can see it by socioeconomics. Yeah. Well, you, you have some indirect data on the, especially the special education students, right? So, you know, one of the big challenges, you know, seven years ago when I started was that your SPED population was 22% and climbing by 1% a year. So 22% of all the students in the district are on an IEP. 
um, with Kayla and the work that she's been doing and the way that we restructured the delivery of services, it has been declining. It's down around 16% now. Mm -hmm. So they are having an impact. Those students are actually improving over time. Mm -hmm. um, if they weren't, we would have a finding from the state. The state would come in and say, hey, um, this subgroup here, um, the gap between the subgroup and your general population is uh, increasing instead of getting smaller like it's supposed to, so you have a finding that you need to work on. We don't have any findings. Um, the other thing that you'll see in the data, which is um, impressive, again, going back to the work that the special educators have been doing, is that the severity of the services uh, that are required has gone down over time. So if you think about an average, the kids that are most likely to come off of IEPs, and we've had a lot of students come off IEPs, that's why the numbers are dropping, the ones that are most likely to come off the IEPs are the ones that have the least severe need, right? Mm -hmm. So if everybody else is the same and you take the least severe out of that average, what's left, the average, even though they're the same kids, should show that things are more severe. And despite that mathematical glitch and how the data is corrected, it's still going down. Mm. So they, they've done some pretty impressive work the last couple of years. Um, so they, they are catching up. The gap is closing. Um, the state doesn't report on all subgroups depending upon the size. Um, you know, if it's under 20 kids, they're not going to report on it because you'd be able to potentially mm -hmm. figure out the individual schools. But because we're a unified district, do they give us some of our data as all one, like, all third graders in, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and you can break it out by school. The, um, on the front page, um, and I don't know if you guys, I, I emailed it, so it should be in, in color. I should be saying you folks. Um, the blue here, if you click on that, um, it's actually a pretty simple system. You know, you can put in Braintree third grade 2021, you know, what was, what were the, you know, percentage of kids that were hitting the proficiency levels. Um, so that's a good thing, and the community can have that. This is up on the website, um, so you know if people want to take a look at how things have changed over time, and you know kind of what's going on. It's all up there. Some good questions. Yeah, the only reason I don't break it out in the ENDS report was because um, the interpretations weren't written that way. It was looking at the district as a whole, yeah. and a lot of that was because the the work in um, both math and ELA was K twelve. It wasn't just focused in one area. I just wonder because some districts may not have, you know, if you don't have as many students who may have learning challenges yep. and you're amalgamating all that data, you know, it that could bring your overall average down. Yeah, the big, the, we're actually beating the pants off the state right now. Um, again, our, our achievement as far as the state is concerned and even in the rankings is high, um, despite what people would try to poo-poo about it. Um, like the Newsweek rankings, they have an actual rubric that they score each school on individually, and after they score it with the rubric, that's when they do the comparison. Um, so it's, uh, like I said, the work that folks have been doing is pretty impressive. The one place where what you're saying is true when it's written about, and that has to do with the science data, is that because we have a high percentage of our juniors going off to the tech center, um, and for whatever reason, when the state shifted around what grades the testing occurs in, they didn't bother to shift science. They left it in 11th grade. And if our 11th graders are at the tech center and they're not taking a science course, but they still have to take that science um, state testing, they're going to score lower than you know, schools that aren't sending off, you know, 660 of their kids every year to, to the tech center. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we get, there, our science is a little bit lower. Um, it's been improving faster than the state. Um, but one of the reasons for that isn't because of any deficiency in the kids. It's because the other kids that we're being compared to have had three years of science. In science, the current year they take the test, a lot of our kids have only had two, just because of the tech center. questions. Anyone else with questions for Lane? <coughs> Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, um, board self-evaluation, BMD 3.1. It is in our, our packets here. Thank you, Anna. Unity of control. Um, 
this is always a conversation to start, but do, do people use the chart? Are there specific things you want to talk about? Um, it's kind of about authority of instructions um, or, or delegation. Um, this has come up occasionally since I've been on the board that a, a board member or a committee will request information that is time consuming. Request information to Blaine that's, that's incredibly time consuming or um, not from the entire board and Lane has kind of kept us in our lane. Oh, do that. <laughs> that a why. Um, uh, to remind us about um, proper channels in terms of your policies information. Make me remind you. What's that? I said your policies make me remind you. Yes, <laughs> and and remind you do. Um, anyone have any? Yeah, Anne. So well, <clears throat> I just I just have to. I, I kind of broke this policy. I apologize because I, I, I actually met with Lane and I made some suggestions, but I wasn't really told by the board to do that. So in reality, I would say I probably uh, should have done that. <laughs> I, I, I only implemented one of them, right, because I don't have to listen unless it all comes from the board. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's just a reminder to me that you know, I if I have an idea, I should probably run it by the board first. Um, and I would say as a board member, sometimes it's hard sometimes figuring out where on the agenda. You know, because some of the, one of the things that I, that I recommended or sort of said to them is, we really should have the monitoring reports on our web page, because those are public documents. And you go to our web page, and the documents that are showing on the web page have nothing to do with the board work. It, it's just some random stuff, and some of it doesn't even go to a page. It's like page not found. I don't even know. And it's nothing that's related to what we do as a board. So anyway, um, but, I, but I should talk to the board and get the board on board <laughs> before before uh, making those, you know, suggestions to the superintendent. Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of harkens back to our policy about speaking with one voice. Right. Right, so right. Um, requesting information as one voice or mm -hmm. making a recommendation um, as one voice. Mm -hmm. Right. It is a good, a good mm -hmm. reminder. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anyone else have anything they want to? They want to bring up? No? Going once, going twice. Okay. Sold. <clears throat> um, let's see. We've got a couple of uh, a first review and a first read. Um, so this this doesn't include a um, a vote or anything like that. Um, did people, did anything strike anyone as they were going through? We'll start with the compensation and benefits, EL 2.7. This was the, um, this was the monitoring report policy that you then alerted us to regarding negotiations. The bus yeah. drivers, yeah. And I appreciate that. Yeah. And I was on the last negotiating committee with them. I, I, I just want to say a lot. It was a very pleasant experience um, and educational. Um, and uh, I feel like that was a lot more recent than 2021. And I feel like I don't still remember seeing a four year contract. So I was yeah. like, wow, oh, that feels so close. <laughs> Yeah, like it just felt so much like time has been a it's been a time warp. Yeah. COVID did a number. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was you and Chelsea and Meg and Meg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's another there's another EL policy and I don't remember what it is, but it's very explicit about making sure that everything is matching the demographics. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So I guess we'll also be probably assigning a negotiations team. Yeah. Out of it, yeah. I mean, do we want to do that now? Great, I propose we do that now. Um, 
so the last time a negotiation team was put together, like we just said, it was three people. Um, it was two or three meetings. We met at the district. Oh, upstairs now. Um, is there anyone who is not currently on a staff, either professional or support negotiation team committee? Is there anyone who's not serving on one of those committees? No, I, I'm willing to do this. I think I'm part of the RTCC one, but uh, or something along those lines. But support yeah. staff. Yeah, support staff. Yeah, support mm -hmm. staff. Right. Okay. So yeah, that'd be fun. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Anyone else? Great. It's you and me, Ryan. Let's do it, Hannah. Let's do it. Okay. So more anon. Once we schedule stuff. Oh, yeah, we if, need to. I, you, I would say you need to. You could do one vote or two. You've got to vote to open up negotiations or ask yeah. if they want to open, and then who's on the committee. So you could probably put it into one. So I move to see if the is it the bus drivers? Mm -hmm. uh, school bus drivers would be interested in opening negotiations with Hannah and Ryan, appointed to that committee. Right. And giving us the authority to negotiate. Yep. With the authority to negotiate. I'll second. Seconded by Sarah. Thank you very much. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Great. Passes. Are you comfortable letting, having me let them know tomorrow and just say, hey, you know, the board voted? Sounds good. Yes. Put, I'll put Great. them in contact with, uh, with the two of you. They usually have two, two folks that always... Yeah. yeah. Really They're the, still there. The negotiation is really just what they've already presented to us in the packet here? No. Or, mm -hmm. That's no. Lane's recommendation. So that, that's Lane's recommendation. Okay. Yeah. So that yeah. might, might be more, might be less, but that's kind of about the going rate. Yeah. Um, and it fluctuates, um, especially with, since inflation. It's yep. And Lane, maybe if you could send the current contract to, to mm -hmm. both of us. Yeah, that would be great. Thank it. you. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so let's see, first read of V3, responsible computer and internet use. Yes, um, we have this policy on record at this time um, from 2020. As you know, a lot happens um, in uh, computer network and internet um, in the span of four years. So this is a uh, required policy. It was most recently updated by the Vermont School Board Association on February 5th, 2024. So this is their most recent version, um, adopted as posted by the Vermont School Board Association. It has been reviewed by Tina Scheindel, our um, technology director, um, and is put in front of you today for first read. Great, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Uh, wow, look at us go. Legislative update. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, I got, I, I got an update on the update that was in the superintendent's report. Yeah. Um, and see if I can weave the, the pieces together here. So, we had talked, because um, I kind of, it seemed like this is what was coming. We had talked in the superintendent's report last month about the idea that there are going to be there's going to be legislation at some point in time that is going to cut ed funding. Um, and probably the only way that districts are going to be able to get into compliance with those cuts is either through closing schools and consolidating buildings um, or, you know, what they call right-sizing staff um, in terms of staff ratios. Um, well, there is House, I believe it's House Bill 887 that they are working on right now. Um, that is designed um, to begin those cuts and it got accelerated today when the education secretary that the governor appointed as interim after the Senate refused to vote her in and confirm her um, has pulled together with a, a group of four other people to start to take a look at how deep those cuts will be. Um, the one thing that I will caution the board on um, is uh, you have about five million in reserve funds. Um, about 2.4 million of it or so is for future subsidization of taxes. 
And one of the big things they are talking about, Ian, is what? It's a clawback. Clawback of reserve funds. I did check with legal counsel. Um, I don't, of course, I, I don't think based upon that conversation um, that they can claw back funds that we already have in our reserve accounts because the town literally voted on putting the funds mm -hmm. there. Uh, but it does mean that in future years, um, they may be taking your surplus. Um, and we'll talk when we get to the financials today, you're going to have about a million in surplus next year. Um, so it's just, just things to keep in the back of your mind. So don't know what will de develop, um, but since the governor seemed very intent on getting this person in place, this is immediately the first thing that's been done um, once the person started. And I mean, it looked like everything was already planned out. That's how fast it's going into motion. Um, it might happen this legislative session. Yeah. So where a surplus was a positive thing before, having a surplus under that would be yeah. not what we want. Yeah, because it's it'll actually increase costs because you know most of your your surpluses are to to do things like replace a roof when the time comes, yeah. right? And so if you don't have the surplus, you're going to have to go out to bond. So now you're dealing with you know the cost to take out those loans, um, interest, whatever else. So mm -hmm. it'll be a lot more expensive process, and everybody will have to vote on it. Yep. Um, so it, it's uh, the world's about to get a lot more complex over the next five years. Did they? mention what they would be spending or taking that surplus so here's here's this and again i'm predicting again but because this was the pattern during covid mm -hmm. they are gonna my, my guess is they're going to require cuts that are so deep there's only two ways to fix it get rid of your smaller buildings consolidate right size your staff they're doing it this way by basically just limiting how much money they're going to give so what they're doing is they're kind of putting caps on the money that they're going to give um, because that way they're not the ones saying you've got to consolidate your schools, mm -hmm. but they're setting up a system so that at the local level yeah. we don't have a choice, so they're we're the ones that take all the heat from the yeah. local community when they're upset about their local schools getting shut down. Yeah. So just that's the caution. Um, yeah, that's predicting, but that's kind of what it looks like. I guess it'll be an interesting five fun. years. Cross, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Across the state, everybody's going to have to deal with it. It won't just be, you know, OSSD. Yeah. So. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. Consent agenda. So we have minutes from our regular meeting on the 10th, minutes from the special meeting on the 15th. That was full remote. Minutes from uh, the committee meeting on the 29th, which was the yeah. ENDS committee, uh, adding in what we have a, a, a paper for the ownership linkage committee on the 17th. Professional and administrative contracts. Do we have any contracts? Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's some in there. I just, I'm trying to follow rules and not sign them until we all right. approve them. Okay. Can can we break this up? Absolutely, we always can. Just don't forget there's also so there's the added uh, ownership hiring linkage authority. and then also the signing authority for hires yep. to the chair. Yeah. Uh I'll keep just oh. So approving the CL CLNA that um Nika mm -hmm. um, presented. This district calendar one. May I speak to that? We please do. Great. So our current um, existing calendar that we have placed um, the student last day on June, student and staff, right, last day on June 17th if no snow days. Mm -hmm. So we have had, we had three emergency closing days across the district and one additional for Randolph Elementary School only. Mm -hmm. Our collective bargaining agreement allows us to do two days with no need to make them up. So um, that puts us to across the district for a last day on June 18th, which is a Tuesday, and would put Randolph Elementary on only on the 19th, Wednesday the 19th. Is this this year or next year? This, this is year. This, year. this year. So I've reached out to the union and asked if they would be agreeable to end for all staff on Tuesday the 18th. Um, or if they would prefer for us to enforce that Randolph Elementary do one extra day only. Um, and they have agreed that they would be agreeable for all staff to end on 
the 18th. <laughs> Wait, so students um, would be in school on the 18th at RES, but no other students no, no, would be yeah. in school? Yeah. So, so here's, uh, here's my, so, so if we follow everything exactly as it's written, everyone, students and staff, would be on campus on Tuesday the 18th. Mm -hmm. And I'm requesting, and I have rationale for this request, that students end on Monday the 17th and staff end on Tuesday the 18th. And uh, here is the rationale for that. Um, we have multiple culmination ceremonies occurring on Friday the 14th and on Monday the 17th. After Monday the 17th, all culminating ceremonies will be completed. So that means the kindergarten culminations, the sixth grade culminations, the middle school culminations, and the high school culminations will all be complete. And so the Tuesday attendance will feel wonky for many. And I have secured funding to do a four-day professional development for that's called Responsive Classroom. It's quite expensive, but I had additional title funds that I invested. So I'd like to compel faculty to come on June 18th, and that would be already paid under the contract. And then I only have to subsidize their compensation with the grant on the 19th, 20th, and 21st to do the full four-day responsive classroom. Um, so my request to the board is for all students across the district to have their last day on the 17th, and all faculty and staff to have their last day on the 18th of June this year. With those additional days coming back, though, for professional development. The those will be paid by a grant yeah. and not part of their existing contract so and just FYI we cannot compel them to do that that was my question yes we cannot so but we can say this is an amazing opportunity we need you to either do it now or over the summer and if you do it now we'll pay you that's what we're gonna do great that's a good incentive there you go. <laughs> yeah. so it is a required we're going to training. make responsive classroom was adopted by the district i believe uh before my time before it, so uh -huh. so i maybe 10 years ago and what we've been doing is compelling all new hires to do it mm -hmm. and some have fallen through the cracks so when we surveyed our existing staff um we we saw that we really do need to do it again with fidelity. And even those who have done it said, that was one of my best trainings I ever had. I would do it again gladly. Mm -hmm. So um, this is fully supported by all the principals and uh, the staff in the district as a great way to improve, reduce student behaviors and improve classroom culture across, across our schools. So I guess my question though is, if we're saying, if you do it now, we'll pay you, but you gotta do it anyway. Yes. So we are compelling them to do it. Which we're, we're allowed to do. Okay. Because they need professional development for their, their license anyhow. Uh -huh. And so we can say, this is the professional development we want you to do. We'll pay for the enrollment, but we're saying in addition to paying for your enrollment, which we would do at any time. Yeah. We're going to pay you. We're gonna we'll pay also your pay you your daily rate mm -hmm. right. if you'll work. And then we're going to be asking the staff who enroll in that to work through the 21st. And do we give a deadline for those who do not do it that week to when they need to have it done by? Are you doing it under surplus? Well, that is going to be funded by title. Okay, so you're um, The title surplus funds? Yeah, it's going to be probably June 30th. It's be it will be, yeah. Um, but Hannah's question to point is if they say I can't attend that I already booked to go to this wedding or whatever there are multiple options over the summer to do it okay and then I guess what you're saying is at what point would we say yeah um, we would have to put them on an improvement plan so it would be some time that be it would we'd have to give them uh, a year to complete it gotcha however I anticipate most of our faculty will want to do it. Sure. We're yeah. looking at a, a real positive like improvement that most of us are really behind. Yeah. And it has been, like, we have teacher leaders who are saying, this is the best PD I ever did. Trust me, you're going to love it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we want. Cool. Is there any concern with meeting an uh, attendance percentage on a Monday 
as the last day of school. So the, the state compels us for 175 student days, mm -hmm. and our contract is 179 student days. Mm -hmm. So we are not needing to request a state waiver because we had three emergency days and one campus had four. So we'll still be at 175, no need to request a waiver. You couldn't end on a Friday though? Then we would need a waiver oh, okay. because we'd be at 174 student days. But uh, and to count as a student day, we need a certain oh, percentage, percentage of students, of right? So is there any concern <clears throat> that having that last day be a Monday, which is kind of wonky, right? Uh, I don't is, think so because okay. we have so the many. Graduations of the graduations are all taking place. We have all of in these. The garden, sixth grade. Uh, on Monday? On yes. Monday. Well, oh, okay. okay. Then, okay. I, don't th I don't think so. I think some no? are on Friday. Aren't some they? are on Friday. I yeah. I'm a sixth grader. Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I think. Um, yeah, I just haven't heard of it on Monday. Monday. Um, I think that we will. Um, we will meet the 50%, especially Great. because we have a culture of having our last day be a lot of fun and yeah. celebratory. Yeah. So I anticipate students will want to attend. Yeah. There right. will be ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Right. Yeah. 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 And I'm there. Yeah. I'm attending. Okay. Okay. You want to wave Monday. at the bus. I'm taking Monday off. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So, and so that's on that. And then um, should I just, should we take a vote on that separately from your consent agenda, or you're adding that to the consent agenda? That's already. Well, it's in there. Okay. Yeah. What's been added is the one committee meeting minutes and the signing authority. I was mm -hmm. going to just say we chunk out the minutes and then go hit these other. Yeah. Great. Hit these other things. Like do it as a chunk. So can I just? I'm just going to move to approve the minutes yeah. um, from the regular, special, and both committee meetings as presented. Seconded. Seconded. Thank you, Brian. Further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. Um, I'll move to approve the district calendar as submitted. Seconded. Or do you want me to do that as a block? Why don't you do all the rest of the block? Well, because there's, yeah, but there's, um, okay, we can do this. My question, though, is the professional administrative contracts, are we not, we just have those, we just don't see those who's, Mm -hmm. That's management. They just, well, we, we just usually, typically, typically, the name. typically the names come to us as a yep. board in the packet. We've always seen the names that we're approving on contracts. That's yeah. always, and that's it pretty has always been in the, in the packet yeah, previously. So I'm just curious if, if that's something that we, we should be aware of or not be aware of, or was that was like a, just like a courtesy thing? Um, I mean, it, it was it was always a courtesy. I, I think this was just we we made an error this time and didn't put it in there because we yep. always did. Moving um, forward, but Anne is Anne is you know the way your policy governance set up. You know, Anne is correct. It's not something that we had to do. Um, but that's something you want to probably want to decide what you want to do moving forward. Because why would be oh we'd be approving the administrative contracts. I think it would be good for public record. Yeah. I, I agree. Think, I think it's a great I idea. Agree, yeah. yeah. More transparency. Usually just useful. a list of the names. Right. Okay. So we could add them. I think we in can the just minutes? in the, in the minutes, yeah, or just yeah, approve professional professional administrative contracts. Maybe just list the names out in the minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shall I read? Yes, please. Is that requested. I would yes. Love that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brandy Colling. Oh, Cassandra Desron Lau. You're Okay, I'm very sorry, Cassandra. Uh, Kristen Morrison, Michael Porzio, Porzio, uh, Sonia Katnaw, Rachel Drury, Catherine Fredericks, Tracy Gardner, Christine Spinella, Jeffrey Green. And are these individuals replacing some of the ones that we heard regarding resignations and retirements? Uh, some of them are re renewals or reassignments. Uh, Sonia um, is going to Brookfield from uh, Randolph. Uh, who else did I hear? Um, Michael Patanaro, he's, is that right? Mm -mm. Porzio. 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 He's, the, he's the new guy at RTCC. Mechanical. Oh, how exciting. The new engineering teacher. So it's good. Um, I mean, I'm just curious because we did hear a bunch of resignations today. So I just want, I'm just curious yes. if, we're, if those are getting backfilled. Yes. You're finding and I, I believe Kristen is replacing Michael Dooley and Haley 
Larry, you, you are correct, yes. Okay. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad that we're able to fill some of these oh, we, previously mentioned individuals who are resigning or retiring. Yeah, uh, we've been really getting some great candidates, and mm -hmm. I think it's because many districts don't have a budget, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And because so with the ESSER funding ending, ESSER funded positions are ending, yeah. And so we, we've been That's we've been getting really good candidates. I know that we were struggling in the past with yes. like having vacancies, so that's great. Yeah, the ESSER money was... Just another thank you to the community for passing the budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That really has been very, very helpful to be able to say, we have a budget. We have, we have a budget. And then, Heather, you mentioned the signing authority. Yes. Um, Hasn't that previously always been the superintendent? So I, yes, um, I'm fine with that. I just wanted to, uh, I would like to ask the board where that you would like it to be. Do you want it to be with the board chair? Do you want it to be with me? But I'm fine with it. It's just I don't want to miss the opportunity like to hire an assistant mm -hmm. principal in a timely manner. Yeah. So In our last meeting, we voted to give you signing authority. Which is great, but not for new hires. For new That's hires, a separate right. authority ah. for a limited window of time while it, over the summer months. Right. I, do, I mean, I kind of feel like as we've given, because with Lane stepping back, mm -hmm. you're, you're overseeing this transition. Yes. So I personally feel like it would make sense for that role for new hires to sit with you for the interim position. Thank you. I'm happy to take it on. I just need the board to she approve She needs it. the board to approve because by law, the board has to approve all professional contracts. So we're actually delegating our authority to yeah. approve contracts to her for the summer while we're, because a lot of times we're not meeting mm -hmm. or our meetings don't come in, in time. And in order to expedite the hiring, she, it just allows her to to, yeah. to yeah. offer that. Uh, I, Heather, I, 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 with, how, yeah. how much time do you think you want that window to be? I want that to be until the board meeting in August. August, okay. So this, when. Now why wouldn't it revert to Michael on July 1. I, oh, the signing authority will revert to him. Yeah. Ah. But I want the window when the board will allow either, either. Uh, assistant superintendent or the superintendent. Or you can say just acting superintendent. Perfect. Right. So rather than saying first. a name. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. There we go. And I, is the board meeting scheduled for August? Do we have a date for that? It should be the second. Uh, August well, we've got our usual yeah. ones. So. Okay. So that's approving, assigning authority, the acting superintendent on new contracts. Through to the Through August board meeting. August 14th, yeah. Okay. Should be August 14th, I think. Second one's there. Yeah, yeah. it is. Perfect. So, um, I can move that. I'll move it, yeah. Well, so move it as there's a, a rest of a slate. Yeah, yeah. so, so moved, which one are we moving? I move to approve the professional administrative contracts, the district calendar as as submitted by Heather, um, with the last student day being June seventeenth, and the last teacher um, staff day being the eighteenth. Um, approve the CLNA for RTCC for the Perkins funding, and approve um, signing or appro approve signing authority to the acting superintendent until the August board meeting for new hires. For new hires, thank you. That little important piece. I will second. It's you took that was that effort. Okay, but you have to repeat everything <laughs> in the motion. I <laughs> retract verbatim. I All right. I have a motion and a second. Further discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That was a lot. Good job, Kevin. Abstentions. Great. Passes. Wonderful. Wow. Don't forget the ownership linkage letter. I have that as a note. That we are. That we approve that already. We are. Yeah. We approve okay. that. We and I have a yeah. note to send that out. Yes. Okay. With a checkbox. It's in the it. action items. Oh. Okay. Uh, superintendent's report. We already kind of talked about yeah, that. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, financials. Um, actually, we're in in really good shape. Like I said, we're going to have about a million dollars in surplus. Mm -hmm. Probably a little bit more than a million. Mm -hmm. um, at this time of the year, we're ten months into uh, the fiscal year. 
Uh, so we should have spent 83% of our budget. We've only spent 63%. Wow. So we're in, we're in the black. Good job. Okay. So. Great. Anyone have any questions on the financial report? Staff appreciation update. I know it's yes. moving along because I need a lot of gift cards. <laughs> yes. Um, this year we were able to have seven local businesses be a part of the That's gift great. cards. And checks were dispersed today. If the business was not um, open, then they were mailed. Who were the businesses? <laughs> um, so it was Wet and Grit, Village Pizza, Short Notice, New Moon, Chef's Market, One Main, and Windy Lane. Great. Great. Uh, those stingy people over at Vermont Glove that didn't get anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Everyone gets a free pair of gloves with their gift yeah. card. Yeah. Uh, Hoover, Hoover's not here to defend himself, so I won't pick on him too much. Thank you for all of the work Thank that you. Thank takes. you. I know it's a lot of contacting. And yeah. yeah, it was, it was, um, Sam did a lot of it, and I did some behind the scenes work, but he did a lot of the negotiating with businesses, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> so did those get, are those getting dispersed then this week then to the staff? Um, Kyle has all of them. That So that was a question, how do we typically disperse those um, in the past? I know you were I in charge of it last year, were they? Typically, I think I just handed them to Linda, and she did something magical with them. Yeah. I think she just okay. like sent the them out. The principal's kind yeah. of the logistics. Okay, right? to the schools, <clears throat> based on the staff at that school, and then I think the principals, yeah, kind of just they were out somewhere for staff. Yeah, that's it. And so. I think it was kind of like a mix of all of them. But yeah, that's, that's exactly the plan. I was going to say once Great. once I'll be passed off to the principals <laughs> tomorrow. I just awesome. need to package them up. And Perfect. Thanks, Kyle. Perfect. I passed them Thank over. You. I was like, something magic happened. They get to people. <laughs> magical. Awesome. Uh, action items recap. So, committees keep meeting. Um, well, I'm not sure actually well, ownership need linkage right needs to right now. Um, the ENDS committee will meet before uh, the next meeting. The letter will go out to the community. Um, uh, once I'm given a go, I'll post on yeah, front you, porch you, forum. Oh, so you yep. So if you could you. and coordinate um, and it has to with go Kyle on the website, right? Todd, I, okay. I think that'd be nice for an eat last mm -hmm. and uh, all that good stuff. Um, and maybe inclusion in the individual school newsletters that go out, a link to it. We can do that. That's a good idea. That, oh, that's a great idea. The, you know, mm -hmm. just one more way to, to hit people. Um, I'll be sending out another webinar um, link, so that's an action item. Listen or watch. Oh, um, and don't forget, uh, BSBA is doing superintendent evaluation for policy governance boards tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And it is a conflict with our Night of the Arts, yeah, which yeah. is also tomorrow night. No, I just found that yeah. out tonight. <laughs> are those recorded in those webinars? They are they recorded, are. too. Okay. Yeah, and it's just an hour, but it's no, I, we had talked about superintendent evaluation and how it's done on, mm -hmm. with a policy governance board. These are, there's probably five or six districts that are taking part in the in the um, training, so it it's just it's kind of nice to hear and ask questions of other boards that use policy governance and are at various stages of it. So it might be helpful since that was a issue that we were trying to figure out how we wanted to do evaluation. Okay. So anyway. Cool. Great. Um, one more action item. Uh, you'll be hearing from me about scheduling a special meeting. Um, mm. So please, I try to put in the subject line, yeah. please respond. Please do respond. No need to reply all. Let's not get into that fun stuff, even though it's just about scheduling. That's not an open meeting thing. That's just a the dinging of the inbox thing. Um, so just reply back to me, and we'll make sure we have a quorum, and we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, with hearings, I think it's always best to be in person if you can, but if you can't, it is what it is. But um, yeah, so you'll be hearing from me. That's an action item for me. Uh, executive session. 
We might want to talk about the that. We'll give you the background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Who's got their little thing? So for Emil, could you pull up that thing and name the um, yeah. number for personnel staff? It's down the bottom. I'm gonna <clears throat> I think it's 313A4. Is that it? Anyone else? Is that the right. one? Is that, is That's the, the motion. Ms. Perfect? Yes. Mm hmm Okay. So I move to go into an ex into executive session citing VSA. 313A.4. And inviting? And inviting the superintendent and the assistant superintendent. Anyone else need to be invited? Nope. Okay. I'll second. Thank you, Sarah. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No. Okay.